Thanks. Uh, it's, it's great to be here back in the box again, mate. Um, probably for me today is, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. One from either side. The, the Kangas, you know, want to finish off the season, want to snap this losing streak and take something positive into next year. So I'm, I'm interested to see how they go about it. Um, whether they're up for the fight or whether they're going, you know what, season's over, I've had enough type of things as well. I don't think that'll be the case, and I actually think this is going to be a, a quite a close game. Um, and in terms of Gold Coast, I guess, uh, as we sort of made, mentioned just before, um, I, the, the interesting to see, the interesting thing for me that I'll be looking for is, is there, is there any change in their game plan that might suggest Damien Hardwick's already putting his fingers into, into this group? So... Will we see something new? Will we see players in different positions? Um, is probably the, the thing that I'll be looking for with the Gold Coast Suns. Yeah, fascinating with Damien Hardwick, of course, watching on. Officially uh, confirmed as the new coach uh, of uh, this football club. Pretty good conditions uh, here for football uh, this afternoon. It might be a good time to welcome the fifth member of our commentary team for today's game. Andrew Cooling joins us from the boundary. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Lovely conditions indeed. We've had a good run of games at uh, Bell Reeve this season. More of that today. Not too much cloud cover. The sun is shining. No real wind to speak of. So conditions about as good as you can get for the players out here today. No real advantage to either end to speak of. The substitutes for both sides. Daniel Howe will be the sub for the Kangaroos and Rory Atkins will be the sub for the Suns. And just to watch on Todd Goldstein. No official word from the club, I have asked, but uh, was rebuffed. Uh, his wife and children were here with him at the ground. The kids were running around on the ground with him pre-game. So potentially this may be the last time we see one of the great modern Ruckman. We'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, thanks, uh, Andrew. That's uh, an interesting watch, isn't it? Todd Goldstein, who, uh, as we just heard, might have the extended family watching on uh, this afternoon. So that is certainly one to watch out for. If not today, then maybe uh, in the early stages of next week if we see an announcement from Todd Goldstein. What a servant he's been, though, uh, Jay Schultz. He's been one of the great ruckmen of maybe the past decade or longer when you think about the best ruckman in the competition, Max Gorn and Nick Natanui and, and others. He's he's right up there, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he went through a period of time in his prime where he was the key guy you had to stop like because he could do it all. He's below, below his knees was outstanding for a big fella of his size. He jumps, he moves well around the ground. He's got a big motor, and then he'd go out forward and be able to clunk him because he's so tall and got long arms. So there was definitely a period of time there where you'd be coming in uh, against the ruse, and he would be a massive focus on how do we stop this guy because that'll go a long way for us to get, to get a win. 314 games, and um, you know, he could have probably gone to Geelong a number of years back but stayed loyal to the ruse. Um, and you wonder, I know he's, he's getting on and he's played a lot of games, but it, it, you know, a year at a club that is really crying out, like look at Port Adelaide. They're probably really crying out for a... They really haven't had the dominant ruckman that maybe a premiership side needs or or Geelong, whether they would come calling in. So it'll be interesting to see what does happen if he uh, does uh, call it a day for his uh, time at, at uh, the Kangaroos. Yeah, it certainly will be out of contract, of course, uh, this year. And we don't know if he has a new one uh, on the table. And as we just heard, some uh, family have made the trip uh, down to Hobart this afternoon to potentially uh, see him off. We won't retire him just yet, but uh, maybe things are just uh, pointing uh, in that direction and uh, what a career he's had. 35 years old and 314 games. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, as we see, both teams uh, out on the Bell Reeve surface uh, going through their uh, warm-ups. Um, as uh, Levi Casbolt has a, a set shot for goal there and sends one through the middle. Jay, you, you mentioned that Damien Hardwick may already just be putting little imprints on this team from the back row. What sort of things do you think that he might um, be looking to maybe get in the ear of Stephen King about and, and maybe tweak? No, nothing wholesale, I'd imagine, but just some, some little manoeuvres here and there do you think we might see this afternoon? Yeah, possibly. I think we could possibly uh, see some players in different positions. Um, or prob probably the big thing that I would be thinking, giving on what he's said in press conferences and uh, etc., that and the way he wants to play and bring that into the, you know Collingwood type of you know flow and run and play on. That may be something that you would see coming out today. It's not a huge change to try and just get players to play on and, and go for it. So that that for me would would possibly be the maybe the one thing he's not going to come in and, and say let's just completely scrap it and play a different way because you need a whole preseason if you're going to change a whole um a style of play so yeah maybe some little bits and pieces maybe some changes and, and guys playing in different spots but 
you know, there may be absolutely nothing at all. So I guess it's one of the interesting things of this game. Eight minutes away from the first bounce here in Hobart, North Melbourne and Gold Coast. Another game uh, happening this afternoon as well, running concurrently uh, with this one. It is between Hawthorne and Fremantle at the MCG. Corbin Middlemass and Matt Clinch calling all the action uh, for you there, and you can find it via the ABC uh, Listen app. If you are that way inclined, another uh, two teams who won't be tasting finals action uh, in 2023. A little later on, it's Brisbane and St Kilda uh, up in Brisbane. That's getting underway at 4.35pm before uh, two games tonight, uh, Geelong and the Western Bulldogs in Geelong. Big ramifications uh, for the Dogs. Win and they're in, lose, and their fate lies in the hands of the GWS Giants and Carlton. The other game tonight is between the West Coast Eagles and the Adelaide Crows who, well, depending on who you ask, probably should be playing uh, finals in season 2023, but uh, they won't be there uh, due to uh, some controversy uh, last week in the game uh, against the Swans. So as you heard from Andrew calling uh, a short time ago, no late changes to either team here at Bell Reeve. Uh, North Melbourne going in as named. Dan Howe has been named the sub, and for the Gold Coast, Rory Atkins will start in the green vest. No late changes for the Suns uh, as well. <sighs> Not a bad... Uh, conditions uh, for footy here at Bellarive. Crowd just starting to build uh, just a little bit. Stephen Williams, what about you? Your your number one sort of takeaway out of uh, today's game in terms of something that, from a North Melbourne perspective, you'd go into the off-season um, as a feather in your cap and, and something as well from the Gold Coast Suns that you'll take into 2024, knowing that you did it well in the last game of 2023? Well, probably from North is just to get that win. You know, a 20-game losing streak. If you could, it would be lovely to go into next year with, you know, we won our last game. So that's probably the big thing that uh, they'll be looking for. And Gold Coast just uh, continue to improve. Just looking at them now, watching Jared Witts, and, and then they're doing a little bit of boundary line stoppage work in front of us here and you just have to look at um you know with Tuke Miller in there with Anderson with Brow with um Ainsworth and Flanders there's some real talent um around the ball so that's probably where the game is going to be won and lost today too who can win that ball around the contest and uh give their forwards first opportunity Casbolt's been really handy up forward for the Suns maybe old Chol you know he'll be uh reunited with his old coach only next year um, so uh, he'll be looking to put on a, a good display as well and uh, and we know from a North Melbourne point of view that um, you know they've uh, got Nick Larkey who's you know really been terrific this year with the amount of goals he's kicked in a side that's been beaten pretty much every week so um, there's some dangers at both ends of the ground for both sides so um, it's going to all come down to supply who can give their forwards uh, most footy and uh, best crack at uh, kicking a score. Nick Larkey's going at Jay Schultz type accuracy too. Uh, you'd be pretty impressed with him, Jay, because you were a sharp shooter yourself, never missed many. And Nick Larkey, 62 goals, 20, I think it is in in the season. He's uh, he's really got uh, he's got a good sort of rhythm. He knows what he's doing, and he kicks so straight. He's going to be important too. I think he booted three uh, the last time the the two sides uh, played here, and North got a win. Yeah, he's um. He- He's a, he's a really talented player, and I've always liked him since since he started playing. Um, and you think like he's not a big possession winner, and which has been a hard season for him. He's only averaging you know eight to ten touches a game, but he's still averaging almost three goals a game. Yeah. You know, imagine if the kid's getting you know sixty inside his fifties every week. You know, he, he all of a sudden becomes a real real dominant forward in the competition. So, and like you said, he kicks the ball beautifully. He looks really comfortable in his own action and his own run up, and that's probably the most important thing to be comfortable in what you're doing. There might even be a little bit of spice between these two clubs. There were some comments during the week from Alistair Clarkson just about the Gold Coast Suns' access uh, to certain picks and concessions uh, during the draft and um, people having a bit of a crack at, at North Melbourne and some of the concessions that that club is asking for and some of the things they might receive. And Clarko was pretty quick to point out uh, a couple of examples uh, from within uh, the Gold Coast Suns, maybe getting a leg up uh, here and there uh, as well. The Gold Coast Suns banner reads, Tassie footy on a Saturday afternoon, let's send the kangaroos hopping home with the wooden spoon. So (laughs) the intentions are pretty clear (laughs) from the Suns. Uh, They want to win this afternoon and they want to condemn uh, the Roos to a third straight uh, wooden spoon. So... 
um, if there was any doubt, uh, that has been erased. The two captains make their way uh, out into uh, the middle. Uh, Jared Witt's captaining the club uh, on this occasion for the Suns. Jai Simpkin for the Roos. He's won the toss and they'll kick uh, to the right of your radio dial, the southern end of the ground as they get uh, into their huddles and we'll be prepare for the first bouncer. A quick tip and a prediction from you first, uh, Stephen Williams. Uh, I'm picking the Gold Coast Suns. I just thought their, their form last week against probably the informed side in the competition was uh, was pretty good without coming home with a win. So I think uh, they'll be the side that uh, goes into the off-season with uh, a win at their back. Jay Schultz, uh, how do you think this one unfolds and who gets the chocolates? Yeah, look, I, I, I'm similar to, to Steve. I think uh, the Gold Coast will get it done. Um, but I think this is going to be a lot closer than what a lot of people probably think. Um, you know, the Kangas are want to, going to want to take something positive into, into pre-season as well. So I'm thinking a, a, a quite a close game. I'm hoping it's a high-scoring close game. Um, give us a... a plenty to look at and watch but yeah I think the Gold Coast will just get it over the line. I think we're all hoping the shackles are a little bit off and it's free flowing and, and maybe we see some highlights and, and plenty of goals this afternoon as both teams make their way out onto the ground they get to their starting uh, positions and we're just about all set to get underway here in Hobart. They might not be finals on offer for these two clubs but still plenty to play for. The ball is raised aloft and you're with Michael Maney for the opening bounce. North Melbourne and Gold Coast from Bell Reef. Jared Witts and Sherry. Witts gets the knockdown. Sherry tries to get through. Little handball from Ainsworth back to Miller. Miller, his high kick. No one can take the mark. Swallow just fed it back. Ainsworth, clever handball to Rowell. Rowell inside 50, kick ill-directed and marked by Ben Mackay. What's his future? Who knows? A couple of clubs after him. Away they go now to the wing. Bergman. And it's a well-measured kick to Phillips, who takes the mark, gets it to Ford. Ford, 50-50 ball for Powell. Rao did really well. Powell Ooh. v. Rao. Nice tip and shoulder on Rao. He hit the deck but bounced straight back up, and they go to him and said, that's what we want to see. We want to see tough, hard at it footy. That was a hard hit, wasn't it? It was uh, Dawson came through perfectly legal, but uh, yeah, really stopped Rao in his tracks. And yeah, that Rao bounced straight back up. I thought that might have floored him as a tumbling ball is sent forward only as far as uh, Hugh Greenwood of North Melbourne. Taylor goes in after it uh, for the ruse. Uh, emerging with the footy here is Fiorini, who kicks the Suns to left half forward. Casbolt just missed it. Mackay tracks it. He kept it in just maybe to his detriment because he sold core into a bit of trouble, but arriving to provide some help is Bailey Scott, and the short ball is good to Curtis Taylor, who marks it right half back. Just on the boundary line, right in front of us on his defensive 50. The short kick to Sheasel is OK. He's had... An enormous amount of the ball. That handball put Phillips under the pump, but uh, Phillips good enough to give it back to him. And now he kicks to the wing and finds Thomas. Thomas, a little pirouette around. Now kicks long, hoping for a mark. One on one. And Collins came in from the side. Greenwood had a little fumble, couldn't get it. Miller arrives on the scene, grabs Greenwood. Ball locked underneath. It's about 45 metres out from the north goal. It'll be a ball up. I think you can see north in 10 early, which is good. Up it goes, Wits and Greenwood, you expect Wits to get that, and it will be another ball up. And the Kangaroos have pushed it about five centimetres closer to their goal, still inside their attacking 54, tried to take it off the top, in fact it was Curtis, and it will be another ball up. So... The Roos trying to inch forward, Wits knocks it down, Rowell went for the fresh air shot, no one can get the footy out of there. I think we've got uh, the treble in early, Chris, and I'll hand it to you because it's going nowhere. Let's see if I can get something out of the congestion. Up it goes again, 45 metres out from North Melbourne's goal. Curtis hands and knees. He's immediately claimed by Lemon, so have another stoppage. No, there's been a free kick plucked out, and we thought that might happen. Umpire had seen enough, hadn't he? He, he had he seen enough. He bounced it four or five <laughs> times in a row and wanted to clear the area. And holding the ball free kick against North Melbourne. Lemons played on. Now it's Noah Anderson clearing the defensive 50. He's got a man out wide in Butterick who takes the mark and just scans things inboard and he goes in that direction to Anderson. Hits the 15-metre kick. He moves things forward by 15 metres to Ainsworth. Now Butterick inside 50 again and Chow marks on his chest on the lead. Tight up against the boundary. 35 metres out from goal in the right forward pocket. 
just good ball movement, wasn't it? All Noah Anderson involved a couple of times in that uh, run of play from the defensive half and uh, a good kick to Chole. So Chole is going to kick around his body, sends it on its way. It's just missing and North Melbourne, or Gold Coast, I should say, open its account. One behind the Suns, they lead North Melbourne yet to score. So the Kangaroos will come out of half back through Sheasel. Sheasel kicks toward the wing. No one can take the mark. Collins did nicely. Anderson, nice little give to Raul. Nicely done finds Sexton. Sexton kicks inside 50. Found a patch of grass, but Core just kicked it off the ground. It wasn't 15 because Taylor took the mark and then fed it away to Dawson, who got it to Ford, who chips back in toward Berkman. Bergman. Running well is Scott. She's a good player, Scott. He kicks to a one-on-one, -on -one and Collins did it nicely, just floating across, took the mark and feeds it back. And another little kick finds McPherson, who got it there from uh, Lemons. And Gold Coast trying to work it out now through Anderson. Another short kick to Flanders. His last three weeks have been outstanding, Sam Flanders. High draft pick and been averaging about 30 possessions. Chips in short and finds Ainsworth at halfback. Ainsworth goes short again and... The Gold Coast move it up the wing. Chole takes the mark at right half forward. And he wheels around 65 metres out from goal. Low burner inside 50. Looking for Casbolt. Takes it on the bounce. Got the handball out to Raul. There's been a free kick, but the advantage is paid. Ainsworth fed it back up to Chole. Left football inside 50. Flanders had to get back. He had two to beat. He went off the deck and kicked the goal. That was a good build, build up from Gold Coast there. I mean, they, they played short chipping game. It was almost like the old of Collingwood going around the boundary and then got to about 60 metres out and then just turned and went. So it's uh, it's interesting. They're playing a bit of a kick and a catch game, whereas the Kangaroos, they're more that forward handball and just going and, and going direct to goal. So the North Melbourne defence was all at sea. They had a two-on-one, but Flanders just patted it to himself. It bounced fortuitously. He got boots a ball inside the goal square and kicked the Suns first. 1-1-7 Gold Coast. North Melbourne yet to score. Five and a half gone for grandstand AFL Stephen Williams. Yeah, just smart play, wasn't it? The, the uh, North Melbourne players just were all pushing back and they're getting numbers behind the ball. But Gold Coast was smart enough not just to give the ball away. Use the ball with their shorter targets and probably that final kick inside the forward 50 has let them down but that one was fortunate enough to go over the back and Flanders was there with the, the boot off the ground to register the first goal. 1-1-7 the Kangaroos uh, the Suns I should say the Kangaroos yet to score Witz got the knock down beautifully to Raul who got it uh, back and now a little chipping ball is marked by Sexton so Sexton goes inside 50 Casbolt is the target and took it at its highest point too and held on just long enough Levi Casbold, and he's got a shot from about 35 metres out directly in front. Just great play, Jay, wasn't it? Just terrific hands out of the middle. North just really didn't have an opportunity there. The, the Suns were really clinical, clean with their handball, and then the kick to Casbold really gave uh, no chance for Mackay to, uh, to spoil that. No, it was a beautiful catch, jump, you know, at the highest point, which is fantastic for the Fords. 22-11 for the season for Levi. Leans back and he has no trouble with them these days. He gets the Gold Coast second. They're 2-1-13. North Melbourne yet to score. We've gone seven minutes on ABC Grandstand Football. He is proof that anyone can improve their exactly. goal kicking. I was just going to say that. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was a shotgun, wasn't he? You never know, knew where it was going to go from Levi. But, um, yeah, he certainly uh, holds the ball nice and still now. Not a lot of, not a lot of moving parts in his, in his action. And uh, he gets pretty good results. Mm. Casbolt gets his first, and the Gold Coast Suns go out to a 13-point lead through seven minutes in this first term here at Bell Reeve. The first two on the board. So back in the middle we go as we get all set. Fremantle lead Hawthorne by a point through six and a half minutes. At the MCG, as Wits wins it down, pouncing on the footy, was Davies inside the centre bounce. He's mobbed by a pair of Roos. Umpire hovers, says nothing doing, as Tom Powell and Taran Thomas 
emerge from the congestion. We'll have another ball up right in the middle of Bell Reeve as Wits and Sherry go after it. It bounces into the path of Flanders, who missed the handball. Lazaro is tackled as he gathered the footy. Simkin tried to scrap a kick inside Ford 50, but Darcy McPherson will come up with it for the Suns. Sends the ball out wide and finds Butterick at left half back for the Suns. Neat ball inside. Had to be good and was as Flanders takes the mark. And this guy is a ball magnet as he goes inside somewhat Ooh. riskily and he's turned it over. Jai Simpkin takes the mark, releases Lazaro by hand. Here's Greenwood on his home deck. Now Powell and North Melbourne can go inside 50 via Goder. He elected to go by hand over the top to Lazaro. He probably should have just put it deep. He's wrapped up by Fiorini. We'll have a ball up on the edge of the 50. North Melbourne attacking zone. They trail by 13 points. Eight and a half gone first term. Ball hits the deck after the bounce. Thomas did it nicely to Sheasel. Now back to Goda. His handball chopped off by Burgess. Ainsworth's kick was smothered. That was tremendous work by uh, the North Melbourne player over there in Perez. A little quick uh, chipping ball finds Anderson. Anderson cuts in board and finds Flanders. Really getting a lot of the football. Running forward is Sexton. It goes over the back. Now it's a foot race. Scott's there. Sexton trying to get there. Scott did really well. Trying to get it to the boundary of Scott. Might have been held. No free kick. In comes Tucker. Tucker tried an underground ball, but it didn't come off. Here's a chance for uh, the uh, <laughs> player there in Lloyd Johnson who uh, kicks it uh, up a long way, you'd have to say, right up the chimney. The stop, the uh, spillage went to core, then off to Gota, and Gota's kick just rolls out of play. And will that be insufficient intent? No, miss kick, or is it? Yes, it'll be a boundary throw in. Wow, comedy of errors there. Scott did pretty well in the end. Yeah, he did. He did. He did really well just to slow it up, to wait for his teammates to arrive and, and give him a help. From the throw in, taken straight out of the ruck by Fiorini over the back, but there's been a push out. It'll go North Melbourne's way. Sherry was infringed upon in the ruck contest. Just inside the defensive 50. He plays on by hand to Sheasel. Goes one way, then the other. Gets onto his right boot and hits the short pass to Perez. He's at the back of the centre square. Gold Coast 2 one thirteen. North Melbourne yet to score as Perez goes towards the outer wing of contest. Taran Thomas was the target. He brought it to ground but couldn't butter up as Ainsworth went in after it, got a handball up to Anderson who put it out in front of Wits, gathered the ball and just spun out of trouble. It was pretty elegant from Wits. Fiorini now releases Anderson. He streams inside 50, tied up against the boundary. Beautiful centering ball to Flanders. That's a great kick. It was just great vision. He knew it. He thought throughout, throughout the whole process was he, as he was bouncing the ball, he was never once looking at the actual goals. He was trying to figure out where am I going to squeeze this ball and that was a tremendous kick across his body just to find that you you know, they find him standing in the middle of the ground on his own. Yeah, class from Noah Anderson to set up Sam Flanders for his second goal of the quarter. He has five disposals. And this young man who not so long ago was playing VFL football will stream in from 35 metres out directly in front and make no mistake whatsoever. So Gold Coast go out to 3-1-19. North Melbourne yet to score. Flanders kicks his second and it's all sons here at Bell Reeves. Stephen Williams. Yeah, they just look to be a little bit classy, don't they? They're handling the ball better when there's a turnover. They're able to make the most of their opportunities. And um, Noah Anderson just keeps racking the ball up. And he's, he's the sort of guy that as soon as he gets one position, he gets he keeps getting involved in the play. So he gives it off and then he keeps moving. And it might not be the next position, but the one after that, he gets hold of it again. And... Um, Flanders is fast becoming in the conversation with uh, Anderson and Raul. He's uh, an exciting young player. Absolutely. And the difference between their movement and then going inside 50 to what the Kangaroos did with a flurry of handballs and then didn't actually end up kicking the ball inside 50 is because the Gold Coast are actually getting their players back behind the ball as well, whereas the Kangaroos are leaving holes. Secondary ball up as uh, Goldstein makes his first appearance on the ground in excess of the 10-minute mark of the first term. So... Goldstein and Choll. Choll just rises above. Lazaro did nicely, got the handball back, had to feed it back about 15 metres and caught with the footy is Simpkin by Raul, who's renowned to be one of the best tacklers in the comp. It'll be a ball up just forward of the centre circle, still in the square. Thomas is tackled by Davies of the Gold Coast, and it will be another ball up. 3 1 19, the Suns, Kangas. Well, they spent uh, a couple of little 
goes inside 50, but they haven't been able to get anywhere from the ball up. Will Phillips has taken to ground, and then we get another ball up. So the Suns popping the question early from the ball up. Goldstein knocks it to Ward Tucker, who slipped. Rao couldn't grab it. Ainsworth just kicked in the back of Goda. Now taken by Anderson. Anderson, we know he's a lovely kick. And this is no exception to Casbolt. Just slipped through his fingers. Couldn't take the mark. Core did nicely. Got it to Phillips. Over the top to Goda. And they are away with Powell. So Powell streaming through the middle of Bell Reeve. Elects to take a bounce. Right football inside 50. Larky direction. It just eludes him. He gets there on the bounce. But the boundary line beat all comers. We'll have a boundary throw in 40 metres around from... North Melbourne's left hand behind post. They get to score here at Bell Reeve as Hawthorne lead Fremantle by 11 points. They're two straight 12 to the Dockers. One behind at the MCG from the restart. Burgess did the ruck work straight down the row, but his kick was turned over. Goda takes the mark outside 50 for North Melbourne. He'll send them long and deep inside and getting across was Mac Andrew with a fist. He sends it through for a minor score. So North Melbourne on the board, 3-1-19 the Suns. North Melbourne one behind the margin. 18 points through 14 minutes. First term for Grandstand AFL. So Gold Coast take it to the half back line. One grab, two grab. Not quite swallow. Couldn't take the mark. And... The umpire will call for it again. Gold Coast, very bright start for them. Noah Anderson, he's kicking and vision exemplary from the ball up. Goldstein, the backhander. Anderson again, handball over the top for Davies. Couldn't take it. Now Phillips for North Melbourne to Goldstein. Goldstein, what's he got in front of him? Ball was touched off the boot. Here's uh, Greenwood. Couldn't quite get there, Hugh Greenwood. Couldn't take it with him. Got there first and then lost control of the footy, and the umpire will call for it again. 15 minutes gone, 18 points the margin in favour of the Suns. Up it goes inside North Melbourne's attacking 50. Rao working hard, somehow squeezes the handball out to Brandon Ellis, who sends a high ball towards the wing. Casbold in front takes the mark. Just on centre wing out of sight, he cuts in board to Darcy McPherson, who takes the mark. Just back of the wing. Out of side. He'll poke a short ball forward to Brandon Ellis. So he'll be reuni reunited with his former coach also, Brandon Ellis, when Damien Hardwick starts in the job next year. Short kick is good to Ballard, and his kick is good to McPherson as they get things moving now off halfback. Lemons just sold himself into a bit of trouble. Didn't quite know where to go. Eventually tried to get it to Ainsworth who was infringed upon at left half forward. He'll get a free kick. He's been busy as well as Ainsworth. Round the back now to Butterick and now uh, Johnston got it off to Davies. They've turned it over here though. The Gold Coast Suns as Curtis goes in after it. Clever paddle into the path of Turner who paddled it in turn into the path of Taran Thomas and it all opens up in front of him at right half forward. Kicks to Larky. Had a little bit of company but stood tall and took a really good mark. 20 metres out from goal directly in front. He'll kick for North Melbourne's first and should put it through Jay Schultz. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, the, it was their pressure of coming at the player and the ball, you know, across their centre half back line to be able to turn that ball over and then they're out everywhere you know there was the first time they've had a real free flowing lucky got a one-on-one -on -one, which he's just put the ball straight through the middle which is great um, and he's able to take a mark because the ball's flowing in there quickly and that that extra player that they've been the Gold Coast have been able to put behind the ball wasn't there because of the you know it was free flowing it was the first time wasn't it that that North were able to make the most of that uh, midfield turnover they've done it three or four times but just haven't been clinical enough with uh, bringing the ball forward but this time they're able to win the ball, and um, it was Taron Thomas that saw Larky at the back and just positioned the kick really nicely to put it in the favour of Larky, and he was able to come forward and take a pretty simple mark, and yeah, certainly one the the ruse needed, so it uh, keeps him in the contest. So Larky kicks his 63rd goal of the season, his first of the afternoon to cut the margin back to 12 points. The Gold Coast Suns leading here at Bellarive through 17 and a half minutes. The tap on from. Uh from Kane Turner was extremely good too and then Thomas did the rest to Larky back in the centre head over the ball was Rao, got the possession and then a reverse torpedo from big Jared Witts and comes at Davies for Gold Coast, can't quite take it Taylor of North Melbourne, tried to go to Lazaro, then copped the high tackle from Miller, he hasn't had a lot of the football took Miller so far, we haven't called him too many times but 
Yeah, he's hurt himself too. Yeah, might have, might have just been winded, or let's hope he's not uh, hurt that leg again. So Core has taken the mark at centre half back and then chips it in short and finds Simpkin, who handballs back to Core. So Core goes long to a contest. Johnston was there. And so too Anderson, who takes it right in front of the interchange gates for a boundary throw in. Just a little bit of a watch on Miller. I think he's rolling around okay. The train has come out and he's brushing him away. So maybe just uh, slightly winded in that exchange. So the boundary throw in. Wits and Goldstein. Goldstein knocks it down. Lazaro leads in the race. Just fed the handball back to Simpkin. Simpkin just got away from a couple, then just kicked a little dribbler down the line. And Turner can't keep it in under pressure from Johnston. It'll be a boundary throw in. We've gone 19 minutes in the first term here at Bell Reeve. The Suns 3 1 19 lead the Kangaroos 1 1 7. Larky getting their first at the 17 minute mark. A boundary throw in, just foot of a wing. Near side for North Melbourne. Simpkin at the base of the pack. Got the handball up to Phillips. Will send the ruse inside 50. It's all Gold Coast, though, as Collins gets across with the double fist and knocks it out of play for a boundary throw in. 3 1 19. The Suns, North Melbourne 1 1 7. Hawthorne lead Fremantle by five points. 17 and a half gone first term at the MCG boundary throw in here at Bell Reeve, 50 metres out from North Melbourne's goal, Lazaro couldn't quite grasp the footy in the congestion, Greenwood laid a big tackle and the base of the pack was Noah Anderson, we'll have another stoppage at right half forward for North Melbourne plenty of intrigue surrounding the result of this game of course and the futures of a couple of North Melbourne players too so from the restart it was Rao who got it around the body to Fiorini. Kick to a contest. Nobody able to take the mark at ground level now. Core goes after it, but he overrun it. And Chole swooped in. Handball now to Anderson who weaved through some traffic. Cut in board by hand to... Well, he was looking for Swallow. It was picked off by Phillips. And then Swallow got him in the high tackle. He plays on immediately by hand to Sheasel who got it to Tucker. Left football inside 50. Larky direction over the top. A wonderful mark, Nick Larky. And isn't this young star forward having a season? He'll kick for his second, a fairly tight angle, 35 metres out from goal. But he always looked the most likely to take that mark. He timed his run and plucked it. It was a nice kick, wasn't it? Darcy Tucker just putting it out in front and giving him some space to run into. So Nick Larky to cut the margin back to six for back-to-back -back goals. He hits the near post and... It goes through for a minus score. So Gold Coast 3-1-19, North Melbourne 1-2-8, 21 minutes gone. First term for Grandstand AFL. Quickness of football. The ball is almost in uh, Gold Coast forward line from a couple of exchanges now taken by Bergman. Bergman at half back. He's a little option to Phillips in the centre of Bell Reeve. Roaming pass was Bergman again. So Bergman kick was just knocked off. Anderson seems to be everywhere at the moment. Beautiful handball over the top to Ellis. Now Butterick. Butterick's got it. He's got a player in Burgess in a bit of space on the wing. Just forward of it. Outside uh, kick, kick looking for Sexton. And he's uh, knocked to the ground. No free kick. Thought he had his arms taken. And then Mackay just got back fed it to core who got it back to mckay and i think uh, i think sexton's got, got a, a case there as goldstein takes the mark on the outer side half back flank just outside his defensive 50 umpire says get on with it todd and he does kicks high to the wing and flying and taking a lovely mark there was ford so ford on the wing looking for something kicks inside 50 hoping for larky can't take the mark Ball's kicked forward by uh, Larky again, and the mark has been taken by North Melbourne, and he'll go back and have a shot, and it's Tucker. That but, was really good work, wasn't it? I think it was Perez that was able to get back there, and uh, he just uh, spoiled that ball, and the umpire decided he'd let it play on, and from that point on, North were able to win the contest, take it down forward, and Nick Larky, the, the distributor that time, putting the ball in the right place for Tucker to go back now and uh, really tighten this game up. Darcy Tucker from 45 directly in front. Goal on pie doesn't move. And all of a sudden, after Gold Coast complete domination in the first part of this first quarter, the margin is back to just five points. Tucker gets his first. The Kangas have 2-2-14. The Suns 3-1-19.
Yeah, both Kangaroos' goals have come from turning the footy over and then just going. And Gold Coast being out of position, not being able to set up. So I think that's going to be a key for the Kangas today is they've got to boot, move the ball quickly and they're not going to be able to play a kick and a catch. Gold Coast are getting back and setting up really well. They're obviously going to be focusing on Larky and you can see that that extra man is just going and plonking himself in front. Even that time with that bowl, that it, they still managed to get one back in front of him, but he was good enough to spoil, chase up his own ball and then, and then hit a target inside 50. Andrew Cooling's on the boundary. A calf complaint for Callum Dawson for North Melbourne came off clutching at his right calf and has been getting worked on by the trainers for the last few minutes. It's a shame. His first game uh, for the season, of course. Callum Dawson for North Melbourne. Goes off early with a calf as the wonky bounce is recalled. And we'll go again in the middle of Bell Reeves. A Sherry, Wits, and Wits just paddled it down to himself. But Phillips off the bounce, sprints away from him and kicks North Melbourne inside. 50 again, lucky at full stretch. Couldn't quite bring it down. He had a pretty good piece of it. But the Suns will come away with it now through Fiorini's at right half back. Chips one over the top to Brandon Ellis, who marks in front of the hill. He'll cut back in board to Tuke Miller, who takes the mark and he'll go short again to Fiorini he's on the outer side centre wing and he comes back in board to Tuke Miller so a couple of touches for Tuke now Brandon Ellis marks the short ball Centre wing out of sign for the Gold Coast Suns. He goes long this time to right half foot. Show flies three deep on the juggle. Couldn't bring it down. Got the ball up to Fiorini. Inside 50 now. Sexton tracks it towards the boundary line. Couldn't keep it in. Boundary throw in. 15 metres around from Gold Coast. Right hand behind post. North's pressure just rammed up a little bit. That kick that was uh, been easy to access uh, early in the quarter. They've been able to put enough pressure on Gold Coast to, to turn the ball over. Suns by five, Wits uh, won it down, hacked out of there by Scott of North Melbourne, only as far as Brandon Ellis, outside of the right boot, all the way to the teeth of goal, it was touched on the way through, a minor score, so 3-2-20, the Suns lead North Melbourne, 2-2-14, 25 and a half gone, first term for Grandstand AFL. Brandon Ellis, almost. So Core plays on from fullback and kicks to half back, and Larky working really hard, fine takes the mark right in front of us here at half back for North Melbourne so Nick Larkey with Collins who's come with him called the play on, kicks long Thomas can't get involved in this and then the uncontested mark for Johnston it's just too easy in the end, no contest at all so Johnston on the wing will kick to half forward now Collins v Larkey Core went for the big fist might have just got half a knuckle on it the crumbs go to Collins. He's tackled by Sheasel. Ainsworth, little handball back out for Fiorini. Got it back to Ainsworth. So Ainsworth just sits it up. No mark taken. Good by the North Vance. Here's Roses. He doesn't need many opportunities. Roses. And he kicks the goal. He's a real sharp shooter. A nice little crummer around goals. And the Suns get a fourth. They're 4 2 26. North 2 2 14. 26 gone. First term. It's always good to have your, your big forwards working up the ground. Unfortunately, though, he can't turn around and kick to himself. So, and then he goes long down the line and there's just no contest because there's no one of his size down there for the Kangas. Just a great opportunist goal, wasn't it, Roses? Just uh, reading the play, watching the ball hit the ground, and then he, did, he only needed a second. He knew exactly where the goals were, put the ball onto his boot, and uh, from our position here in the commentary box, it was never going to miss. It was a great goal. Fremantle out by 10 at the MCG. They're 3-4-22, leading the Hawks to straight 12. That's the other game occurring this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the coverage from here at Bell Reeve via ABC Radio, Sport Digital, the ABC Listen app, News Radio. As we go back into the middle, Sherry wins it down on this occasion. Hacked out of there by Simpkin to a contest. Powell couldn't bring it under his spell as Thomas lays a strong tackle. Ball spills out. It might have been a throw at the end, and Thomas will be rewarded. It was interesting. Umpire number 41, who's about 80 metres away, called that with the other two umpires within 10 minutes letting it go. Free kick against Davey, so Thomas will send North Melbourne inside 50 to right half forward. Sherry was the target, couldn't bring it down uh, after it went go to, but it went straight into the lap of Rao. Johnston now, Thomas lays another tackle. In fact, he gives away the free kick on this occasion against Flanders, who got one in the back. 
Sam Flanders, good first quarter for him, a couple of goals, a little short kick on the half volley taken by Miller. Miller's kick is ill-directed and marked by Scott. Raoul stands the mark. So Scott, pretty much from half back, little chip finds Phillips, starting to work his way into the game. Phillips kicks long, who can take a mark? Curtis was there, couldn't get the crumb. Collins, little handball to Fiorini. Another handball back away to Ainsworth. Flanders couldn't take the mark. North have got it here through Goda. Goda squeezes the kick and finds Larky right on the paint of 50. And this will be a really good kick if he can get it. He'll have to kick it from just on the paint of 50. And he's right in front of the, almost the Ricky Ponting stand here. And what's he going to do? Nick Larky. It's a good one. Great word by Josh Goda, wasn't it? To he really won a two-on-one against him and was able to have enough poise to find Larky and uh, Larky has the opportunity for number two. He's missed out to the right. He did that before and hit the right goal post and now he's just pushed it through for a behind. So North moved to 2-3-15. Suns 4-2-26, 29 gone in the first term at Bell Reef. Step into the first here in Hobart. From the kick in, beyond defensive 50, go the Suns. Perez unable to bring down the mark, but there goes the siren. Gold Coast 4-2-26 lead North Melbourne 2-3-15. An 11-point margin after one here at Bell Reeve. It was the Suns kicking the first three goals of the game via uh, Flanders, who kicked two, and Levi Kasbolt, he chipped in with one. Malcolm Roses kicks an opportunist goal to have the Suns at 4-2-26 while for North Melbourne it was Nick Larky kicking one and Darcy Tucker with one of his own as well as they reeled things back uh, late in the term. Some of the major ball winners uh, for you at the quarter time break uh, for the Gold Coast. Ainsworth has 12, Noah Anderson with 11 Fiorini and Rao have 9 apiece for North Melbourne uh, Will Phillips has been busy he's had the ball 10 times, Core with 8 Goda and Simpkin with seven apiece. Gold Coast 4 2 26 lead North Melbourne 2 3 15, an 11 point margin after one quarter played here in Hobart. We'll take a short break and be back after this. ABC Listen. The police say they can't be sure the two fires are linked. The number of anti Asian posters have but been. Admit the coincidence is highly suspicious. I was only eight when my family was targeted as part of a series of terror attacks. Join Crispy and Chan on this deeply personal investigation. I need to know exactly how it happened and what they'd say now if I found them. Firebomb, the new series of the Unravel True Crime podcast. Find it on the ABC Listen app. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. To Raul, there's been a free kick, but the advantage is paid. Ainsworth fed it back up to Chole. Left football inside 50. Flanders had to get back. He had two to beat. He went off the deck and kicked the goal. Fiorini now releases Anderson. He streams inside 50. Tied up against the boundary. Beautiful centering ball to Flanders. That's a great kick. It's just great vision. From 35 metres out, directly in front. Make no mistake whatsoever. They just look to be a little bit classy, don't they? They're handling the ball better when there's a turnover. They're able to make the most of their opportunities. Ainsworth, a little handball back out for Fiorini. Got it back to Ainsworth. So Ainsworth just sits it up. No mark taken. Goodbye the North Mass. Here's Roses. He doesn't need many opportunities. Roses. And he kicks the goal. The 2023 AFL season. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Yes, round 24 action for Grandstand AFL. We are one quarter down here in Hobart, North Melbourne. And the Gold Coast Suns, and it is the Suns who lead after one, 4-2-26 to North Melbourne's 2-3-15. There is another game being played as we speak. It's happening at the MCG between Fremantle and Hawthorne. Quarter time there also. And it is Fremantle leading the Hawks 3-4-22 to Hawthorne's two straight 12. The goal kickers uh, here at Bellreve Oval for the Gold Coast. Sam Flanders has two singles to Levi Casbolt and Malcolm Roses for North Melbourne. Nick Larkey and Darcy Tucker have a goal apiece for the home team. Uh, not much of a crowd in, it has to be said, uh, here in Hobart between these two teams. 
uh, neither of which will be tasting uh, finals action in 2023. But uh, certainly lots to talk about in the context of next year and what lies beyond for the Gold Coast Suns and North Melbourne Kangaroos. Stephen Williams is alongside me, one of our experts for this afternoon. How did you see the first? Yeah, I thought Gold Coast were probably just a little bit better with their ball use. Um, I think the amount of times that um, North had the first possession of the footy but just couldn't get it from the inside of the contest to the outside, whereas Gold Coast, when they got their first hands on the footy with their their clean hands are able to get the ball outside and uh, get on their way, particularly early in the quarter. North were a bit better as the quarter went on and were able to even that stat up a little bit, but uh, the goal seemed to come a little bit easier when Gold Coast went forward than when North Melbourne went forward. But um, to North's credit, they just kept working hard and as Jay mentioned during the call, they're just willing to take the game on when they were able to move the ball quickly, win that turnover around the middle of the ground and move it quickly, they were able to catch Gold Coast out. But uh, when they weren't able to get it going as quickly as possible and give Gold Coast the opportunity to set up behind the ball, it was a lot harder for them. So um, I'm sure that's a message a quarter time from Alistair Clarkson, just to get take that short kick mark and then have someone wrapping around the back to release the ball to and uh, get it moving so we can get it over the back of that Gold Coast zone. And the voice of Stephen Williams on Grandstand AFL. Hope you're uh, enjoying the coverage for ABC Radio, Sport Digital News Radio and via the ABC uh, Listen app. Chris Robottom is my name, Michael Maney alongside me and Jay Schultz, our other expert uh, for the afternoon. What caught your eye in the first term, Jay? Oh, look, you can... You can Easily see that there's two completely different game styles going on here. Um, Gold Coast are wanting to kick Mark, hold the ball. I mean, you can tell that by uncontested possessions there in front, 75 to 57, and they've had 35 marks to 23. You know, the Kangaroos are trying to t- pressure, turn the ball over, and then just go. Um, Gold Coast are playing a bit of keepies off, catch Mark, control the game, and then once they get to 60 out, then they turn and go. So... Um, really, two really different game styles so it's it's going to be interesting to see who can play theirs the best for the longest Some early chances uh, for Nick Larkey as well, we know about the season uh, that he's had so far this season 62 goals coming into this game, he's added one to go to 63 uh, for the year, I wonder if he can just cap off a, a wonderful season 2023 We'll soon find out. We're underway in the second term here at Bell Reeve. North Melbourne and Gold Coast. Suns by 11 points. You're with Michael Maney. From the bounce down, Witts got it down. Quickly running onto it was Anderson, who got a quick kick inside 50. No mark, but a free kick might come to Burgess, who was playing in front. The boy from West Adelaide originally, and he'll get a free kick. Had his arms chopped in the contest, and he'll kick from... About 47 metres out directly in front. That's a, the beauty of, of winning that ball out of the middle quickly. It, uh, it goes into your forward half. It's six on six, and uh, the defenders panic a little bit, and uh, the free kick was given away. So Anderson involved again, having some sort of a game. Here's Burgess from probably the paint of 50. Good-looking kick. Might have faded away to the right, a behind. So the Suns are underway in the second term, 4-3-27 to North Melbourne 2 3 15. We haven't got a minute as yet, and it's at half back with 84. First game of the season for Burgess. Would have been a nice way to cap off the year. As Bailey Scott marks and goes across his defensive goal, and Aiden Cord takes the mark, streams outside the defensive 50, sends a long ball up the line. It was a good one, too, to Kane Turner, who took the mark, diving over the boundary line in front of the hill. Kane Turner. He'll send things forward by 40 metres. Kicks to right half forward in the Goldstein direction. He stands tall and takes a strong mark. Wheels right onto his left boot. Larky direction. Mac Andrew over the top. Got the fist in. At ground level uh, was Miller who fed it out uh, to Fiorini whose kick has been chopped off. It was a 15 metre pass intended for Rosas. But getting in front was Curtis Taylor picking his pocket. And he's going to line up for goal 45 metres out on a tight angle. Curtis Taylor and his promising sort of up and coming 50 gamers for North Melbourne on the runway makes a pretty deliberate approach he just slides it across the face and it misses by the barest of margins so a minor score for North Melbourne Gold Coast 4-3-27 lead 
by 11 points. North Melbourne 2 4 16, two and a half gone second term. So a long kick out from fullback. And lovely mark by Casbolt. That was uh, beautifully taken. He's got a beautiful pair of hands, hasn't he, Levi? Just uh, nice and soft and one grab. The lemons kick found him. And then even his field kicking, Stephen, is uh, he's up to scratch, isn't it? Yeah, it's really improved. Anderson, who took the mark and then fed it away to Lemons. In fact, it was uh, Sexton. Sexton kicks long and Swallow, with a couple of grabs, takes the mark in the right forward pocket. So a slow build-up, but then in the end, Swallow didn't have too much pressure on him and then just grabbed it at the second take. So David Swallow, been there for a long time. He's been there all he has, the time. Yeah, he hasn't, hasn't he? he's been a real uh, warrior for the club. But, uh, yeah, it was a slow build-up, and uh, you probably thought North should have been able to get back and help out, but uh, you shouldn't really have someone in his size taking those marks. His brother played for North Melbourne. Here's Swallow. That's a good-looking kick, and they get their first of the term and their fifth for the game. David Swallow gets his first, and the Suns draw first blood in the second. 5-3-33, North Melbourne 2-4-16, three minutes gone in the second term at Bell Reef. Yeah, he's been a good player for, for a long time, just like his older brother was at, at the Kangaroos, and he's finishing off his season really well. I think a couple of weeks ago he kicked four goals three, so for a, a, you know, a guy of his size to go down and do that up forward, is, you know, it just really shows that he can play all over the place. Really hurts you too, doesn't it, when you have a shot for goal up one end, hit the post, yeah. and then straight down the other end and they kick a goal. It's almost like a two-goal turnaround, so uh, a good start for Gold Coast, but a bit deflating for the Ruse. Yeah, four goals three for David Swallow last week against Carlton. 14 goals for the season. It's been something of a forward line threat in recent weeks as David Swallow. It's been a long time in the midfield, and that's exactly where we find ourselves here from the restart. Out of the congestion. That was Davies who just missed the handball. Thomas went and got it for North Melbourne. Over the top to Lazaro. He'll send North Melbourne inside 50. Turn a direction. Brought it to ground. Greenwood at the full. Swooping through with Simpkin. Immediately tackled by Tuke Miller. He got one in the back. So Simpkin will take the free kick here from right on the paint of 50. 45 degree angle. He plays on by hand. Rushing through. I think it might have been Goda who had a flying shot on goal, but he missed everything across the face. No score. Out of bounds on the full. Collins to take the free kick. Obviously, Simpkin didn't think he had the journey in him, and Goda just sort of got a bit unbalanced. So the kick from Collins to a pack. Oh, and he tries back. to drive his yeah. way through there, did Perez, <clears throat> and uh, he's going to win a free kick. So Perez from just outside his attacking 50 on right in front of the broadcast box here. So Perez just sits it up. He's hoping for a Larky mark. Oh, he got there too. Couldn't hold on. Nick Larky fell over the back. Little quick kick by Greenwood hits the post. He did well, the big fella, to get both hands on it with the amount of numbers that the Gold Coast had there. He, um, he probably should have held on to that one. So 17 points the margin now in favour of the Gold Coast. Oh, Butterick Risty kick in, kick to a contest. Goder arrived, punched it down, but they'll get out of jail here because it bounced straight back to Butterick, who found uh, Ainsworth, and now Sexton has it in the middle of Bell Reeve. He'll go short to Wits, who plays on by hand to Took Miller, and all of a sudden the Suns are inside 50. Swallow on a long lead. He let it bounce in front of him. He couldn't quite take it on the full, and it eluded him and went over the boundary line for a throw-in. 30 metres around from the Suns' right hand behind post. Might have lost a little bit of that in the sun, I think. He just yeah. tended to pull up. And lead by 16 points as Wits and Sherry do battle. In fact, it was Goldstein. And Anderson from the base of the pack emerges with the footy. Got it out to Fiorini. Yeah. Left foot snap on goal. He's good. And the Gold Coast get their second for the term and stretch the lead. Out to 22 points. 6 3 39 the Suns. North Melbourne 2 5 17. Seven minutes gone. Second term for Grandstand AFL. Once again, no one Anderson, wasn't it? Around the packs. Yeah. His, his ability to win that first possession. He doesn't fumble and uh, release that 
handball to Fiorini and uh, what a what a goal, hey? Just didn't have a lot of time, but uh, on the left foot, a lot of talent in this Gold Coast side, and that was uh, that was terrific around the body. Absolutely, clean clean at ground level. You know, he's able to step out of the contest and quick handball, and then a real opportunist goal with the, on the left boot. Be happy to see that flow through. Three goals, seven before this game. Braden Fiorini, so gets his first of the afternoon. The Sun 6 3 39, North Melbourne 2 5 17. Back in the centre, Witz knocks it down. Looking for Anderson, why wouldn't you? And he ends up with it somehow. So Anderson kicks inside 50, just hits a piece of grass taken by Mackay. Mackay measures the kick and finds Lazaro at half back. Cuts in board to Cor, who ran past. Then he's a fumbling handball back to Perez. So then an awkward handball back to Lazaro. What can he do with this? This time he tidies it up and finds Turner. Turner to Cor, who kept running. Cor with a real wobbly old ball. Ballard couldn't take the mark. In goes Simkin. He's tackled it with one arm. How did he get rid of it? Yes, got the kick away. Ainsworth running onto him was Turner. Turner couldn't. Uh, quite control the footy and then a free kick for holding on will be taken and it'll go to Butterick. So Butterick goes short down the line and finds Wits on the wing on the outer side. Wits takes the mark, wheels around onto his left boot and spots up Kaz Bold who plays on by hand to Fiorini. Inside 50 they go. Sexton couldn't bring down the mark. Swoopy got a loose ball. It was Took Miller right foot snap goal. Suns have three for the term, and they're out by 28 points. 7-3, 45 Gold Coast, North Melbourne 2 5 17. Eight and a half minutes gone, second term for Grandstand AFL. It's all Gold Coast here at Belreve. Gold Coast are just cleaner, you know, and they, uh, they played fast play then, and they hit all their handballs and their kicks, whereas Kangaroos coming back the other way, they're really trying to use that forward handball to break the lines and, and get the ball going quickly, and they're one or two fumbles and turnover and everyone's out of position because you're all running forward and Gold Coast just go whack, whack, whack and then Took Miller for the finish does a really great uh, crumb and goal. Just great running by Took Miller but Connor Butterick, his ability to win the ball across half back and release it with that low hard kick that gets to its target really quickly. He's two or three times now he's been able to get Gold Coast on their way and really open up north. 28 points the margin now in favour of the Sun, so a game high. Phillips just snags it off the contest. Knocked away by Johnston from the floating Phillips kick. Then Goda fed a handball back in now Lazaro. Lazaro had a man in short and finds him in uh, Curtis. And Curtis goes in short to Larky. Kick. Good kick. Right out in front of Larky. He was on a full burst and Larky had took that right in front of his nose. What a kick, what a mark. It was good synergy, wasn't it, between those forwards? And he knew exactly what he was going to do with the ball then, um, Curtis Taylor. As soon as he marked it, he rolled onto his left, and uh, Larky was leading. Larky from about 40 metres out on a slight angle. We're right behind it. It's hung on nicely. It's a goal. So North get one back. They needed that goal to stay in touch. They moved to 3-5-23. The Suns 7-3-45. Nick Larky gets his second of the afternoon. That was really good leading and, and kicking. I mean, Larky obviously knows his play as well, knows he's a left footer, knew he was going to turn and the speed, he worked back to goal to open up that space in front of him that, in that leading lane that he could go and he was on the move before, before he'd even turned and kicked it. It's just good to see some of these young players on both sides that we probably don't know a lot about but just see what they actually have in the kit bag and uh, they've shown us today that, uh, you know, either left or right foot, uh, they can certainly kick the ball well, which is so important in today's footy. 64 goals for the season. Now, Nick Larkey signed a contract extension earlier this year, all the way through to the end of 2029. So a bright spot for North Melbourne fans. And speaking of, here's Taran Thomas bursting out of the middle, takes a bounce and sends North Melbourne to right half forward. Paul Curtis marks on his chest. Onto his left boot, spearing ball inside 50. Larky direction. He might have been held in the forward pocket as they go on after it. It spills over the boundary line and that was electric out of the middle from North Melbourne. And just a little glimpse of maybe what some of these young chargers are capable of. Taron Thomas, that's just, just what he can do. He's such a big body midfielder, but uh, he can do anything with the footy. It's a boundary throw in deep in the tap for North Melbourne. Can they string together back to back goals? Lazaro, if they'd had a handball to Lark, he had a little bit of room to move, sends a ball to the top of the goal square, getting in front was Curtis Taylor. Marks on his chest, and he'll kick for North Melbourne's second goal of the term from 25 metres out directly in front. 
I think that was a bit of a miss kick there. I think he was having a ping for goal, but it worked well. Ford in front, and now he gets another shot anyway. So Curtis Taylor, eight goals in season 2023. You'd like to add to his tally here, and he pops it straight through. So back-to-back -back goals for the Roos. And they just look so much more dangerous when they're, when they're clean and they move the ball quickly. The Gold Coast really struggled to hold them. So it was clean out of the middle. It was quick, and, and all the forwards have got space to lead into, and, and they just look a lot so much more dangerous. Back to 16 points. Gold Coast Sun, 7-3-45. North Melbourne, 4-5-29. Almost 13 minutes gone, second term for Grandstand AFL. Stephen Williams. It's not easy to arrest momentum either, and, and the, the Gold Coast Sun certainly had it at the start of that quarter, but, uh, you know, we always thought maybe if Gold Coast kicked the next goal, the game might almost get out of hand. But uh, to North's credit, they've been able to, as Jay mentioned, win the ball inside, move it in there quickly, and uh, a couple of goals has them back in the contest. 13 gone, 4-5-29 North, Sun 7-3-45, Choll from the bounce, Rao snagged it, got it to Anderson, another possession, a high floating ball, no one can take the mark, Kaur in the congestion, finally ends up with Bergman, Bergman's kick looking for Ford who couldn't quite hang on, was out in front, nice little handball back, ends up with Rao, so Rao for a Gold Coast, kicks a left footer, up goes uh, big uh, Casbold I think it was who couldn't take the mark and now North clear it out Sheasel needs a bounce had a couple to contend with then had it on a string got it to Powell Powell's a little handball over the top to Tucker Tucker wants that left boot then swings a handball a loping one to uh, Powell then got it back to Simpkin for North and Simpkin's kick finds Turner on the wing in front of Anderson on the outer side so not a bad little patch here from North Melbourne Bowling board now to Bergman. Just back of a wing. On the outer side, he stabs a pass to Powell, who marks on his chest in front of Flanders. He goes short again. It wasn't much chop the kick, though. He'll get away with it, though, because it spilt straight back to him, feigned a handball, and eventually found a target in Bailey Scott, who's in the middle of Bell Reeve. He's going to play on and get onto his right boot and just send things out a little wider, where Tucker... Receives at right half forward. Inboard now to Simpkin. Patient build up here from North Melbourne. 75 from goal. Handball now back to Bergman. Inside 50 go the ruse. Andrew gets uh, in front with the spoil. Taylor attacks it. Fed out a handball to Ford. He spotted a man in Phillips. Couldn't quite get there with the handball. Rao pounced on a loose footy and burst through a tackle. Was the wanting his mate in Anderson, but Ainsworth got there first. Rode the tackle. Eventually got it off to Anderson. And now he relies releases Flanders, who marks on the near wing in front of Mackay. Right foot ball to right half forward in the swallow direction. Bergman got across, forced the contest and killed it out of bounds. And they just maybe got away with one there. North Melbourne as Gold Coast are on the charge off half back. 7-3-45 the Suns. North Melbourne 4-5-29. 15 and a half gone second turn. A few years in the system now, Matt Rao breaking tackles easily. He's got a really hard body so the Suns looking to go into attack Johnston kicks it down the wing it's very close to the line stayed in Casbolt handball away looking for Davies Davies of Gold Coast a real little bouncing ball looking for Choll Choll can't grab it well done Sheasel he reads the play beautifully this bloke and then kicks a measured pass to Powell who got it to Goldstein now Lazaro they've worked it to the wing and now Phillips Phillips thought about going down the line and cut back across ground and that's good vision and the mark taken by Turner lovely little handball to Powell Powell doesn't know where to go thought of handball four times changed his mind six oh. and now hits Larky on the chest with a bullet and Larky will kick from 40 metres out slight angle and Powell even though he changed his mind a few times it opened up for him with Larky on the lead yeah he didn't panic which was the key thing he didn't just try and get rid of it and flick it to someone else because everyone else was manned up around him so and he was able to spot that target and deliver it beautifully cool head in the end by Powell so Larky's kick two and this to drag it back to a 10 point margin from 40 stabbing kick by Larky and the goal umpire says you've got three Nick and he is proving a handful for the Gold Coast defence and the Kangaroos stay in touch. 5-5-35. Five, five, the Suns 7-3-45. 17 minutes gone 
in the second term. You're listening to Grandstand Football. A couple of those to mark and play on. I reckon one of them to Tristan Cherry. He didn't actually know that he had it. The ball was marked and was just popped onto his chest as he was running past. He got the surprise of his life. But um, we've seen a little bit of both from North this quarter, haven't we? They've they've slowed it down a little bit and looked to. Uh, just attack their way forward and then we saw that time uh, a couple of really quick gibs that really opened up the Gold Coast. It's really similar to the first first quarter actually. Gold Coast come out swinging and then North have been able to settle in and peg them back. The voice of Jay Schultz on Grandstand AFL for ABC Radio, Sport Digital, News Radio and of course via the ABC uh, Listen app as well. Out of the middle come North Melbourne via the boot of Sherry. Contest at half four. Johnston off hands for the Suns. Got it off to Took Miller. Kick through the congestion to a contest. Rose is the target. Off hands now Davies. Pounced on a loose foot. He sent a really neat little ball to Casbold who marks six from goal, right foot inside 50, chill direction, had to extend, couldn't bring down the mark North Melbourne come up with it through uh, Scott, now Tucker runs his full measure, left football up the near side Ballard went back with bravery and took a nice mark in front of Taran Thomas and he just relieves the pressure for the Suns back of a wing, thought about cutting across to Tuke Miller, eventually will go long up the line to a contest uh, Kasbolt out of position, Davies at the fall, tackled by Simpkin, got boot to ball, it rolls towards the boundary, Scott arrives first for North Melbourne, handball now to Tucker, his kick is smothered and it's out of bounds for a boundary throw in, 65 metres around from Gold Coast goal, another game taking place at the moment at the MCG, Fremantle lead Hawthorne by 16 points, 18 and a half gone second term at the G. Boundary throw in, which kept his feet and uh, Goldstein couldn't. Little quick kick out of there, Suns go forward, no one can take the mark. In goes Sheasel, little handball away to Bergman. So Bergman kicks out wide, looking for Turner. And Turner marks in front of McPherson, has a little short on in Larky, who's on the wing on the outer side of the ground, Nick Larky. So he's working hard, goes in board, the target's Gota, and Gota takes a good mark under pressure from Miller. So Gota goes in short, Powell. Powell with a handball away. Now, the long kick inside. It's not been marked by Ballard. Taken by Goldstein. He did the rope. He got it to Larky. Yeah. He's got four. He dribbled it through, Nick Larky. And he's got four. Kangaroos have got six. We've got a four-point ball game at Bell Reeve. The Sun 7-3-45. North on a bit of a roll, 6-5-41. It was really good work by Goldie. He just managed to get a couple of fingers in, follow up his own ball at ground level, flick a little handle through. Larky's having a day out at the moment. It's great. And he's working hard, isn't he? Because yeah. we saw him win that ball probably on the wing area and uh, drive it in, but then follow it down. And uh, if you're around the contest, you give yourself an opportunity. And as you mentioned, Goldie was good enough to be able to win the handball. And uh, Nick Larky loves those little ones from the goal square. 7-3-45, the Suns. North Melbourne, 6-5-41. Four-point ball game. Nick Larky, four majors. And North Melbourne have four on the trot. Four goal two out of six goal five. So he's having a ma major influence, isn't he? Suns were out by as many as 28 points at one stage during this game. But maybe they can work some magic here through Took Miller. Out of the middle they go. But Ben Mackay took the mark. Did he infringe? He didn't. North Melbourne have it inside the defensive 50. Bailey Scott releases Sheasel. He got it off to Bergman by hand. He missed uh, the running Scott. Ended up with Johnston of the Suns, who fed it back to Fiorini. His kick was almost chopped off by Taylor, but Brandon Ellis took it off hands and just snapped the right football inside 50. Roses off the pack. A wonderful roving goal from Malcolm Roses. The second opportunist goal from him this afternoon. And the second might have been even better than the first and didn't they need it the Suns 8-3-51 Gold Coast North Melbourne 6-5-41 back out to a 10 point margin 21 and a half gone, second term for Grandstand AFL, a wonderful piece of crumbing Stephen Williams. It was wasn't it it's just a 101 forward craft isn't it, just uh, to be disciplined enough not to run past the contest to sit in front and wait for the crumb because as we know most of it comes to the front and uh, he won that crumb but then the, the hard task was uh, finding the goal and on the left he was able to thread it through so uh, a couple of wonderful goals by Malcolm Roses 8-3-51 the Suns 6-5-41 North Melbourne, it got out to 28 points in favour of the Suns at the 9 minute mark so 
North have done okay. Lazaro out of the congestion in the middle. Nice little sidestep by Powell. Is really starting to get some football now. The kick ill-directed. Ballard just sprawling, couldn't take the mark. Now Butterick. So Butterick's got it. He's normally pretty good with a bullet pass. Tried to find Davies. Davies released the hands to Fiorini, but uh, the umpire said he was pushed. Um, advantage rule paid. Goes to Miller. Miller looks for Casbold. Bouncing ball just eludes all players. Flanders are going to run onto it. Got the handball to Ainsworth, who tried to knock it onto Davies. Well done by Big Cherry. He uh, released the footy, then got it back. And now Powell, another possession for him. And he shorts it into the centre of the ground and finds Simpkin. Simpkin's got Sheasel. Where's Larky? And he goes in short to Curtis. So all the attention was on Larky, and Curtis just got in front, produced the lead, and they used the football beautifully and hit Curtis, and he'll shoot from 40 metres out directly in front. Yeah, Kangaroos turning that ball over again, and then a couple of flick, quick handballs on the fast play. Obviously, the attention of the Gold Coast is, is now going towards Larky because he's having a day out, and, and other guys are going to get out now for the rest of the game. Paul Curtis from 40-45. This one's just faded away, has it? No, he's just scraped it through. Now, the goal umpire is going to call for a review. Of course he is. <laughs> and your job might depend on it, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it might be that it hit the post, so we're just going to wait. So the Curtis kick was running fairly close to the post. We'll have Snicko, we'll have all sorts of things... They might take a bit more time than they have. So let's just wait and see. So. so it looks like that ball is all clear for a goal. We'll just wait on official confirmation. I think it's bouncing off uh, Yemen somewhere. <laughs> and now it's uh, the message has got through. And Curtis has got his first goal. And North Melbourne peg it back to four points. So the Kangaroos 7-5-47. The Suns 8-3-51. We've gone 24 and a half minutes in the second. Tom Powell's had a real influence, hasn't he, on this uh, game in this quarter. His ability to win the ball through the middle, not panic, make the right decisions when he's got the ball. Um, one of the young players that we probably don't talk enough about, but uh, a guy that's got a real lot of talent. Don't worry about <clears throat> draft picks and new coaches and all that business. We've got a game of footy on our hands here in Hobart between the Suns and the Roos. Entertaining contest. The Suns led by as many as 28 points earlier in this quarter. But the Roos have showed plenty of spirit to bring it back to just four. Back in the middle we go. Sherry and Wits. Wits won it down. Ainsworth off the wing. Couldn't grab the footy. He lays a tackle though on Goldstein who somehow fed out a handball. Uh, Rao went skidding on through. It spills out the back. Davies arrives first for the Suns. He's immediately claimed by Scott. Got it out to Swallow. Back to Davies. Right foot tumbler right into the left forward pocket for the Suns. It rolls out of bounds. You don't realise how big Jared Witts is until he stands alongside a Goldie. He makes Goldie look actually a bit small. He's just just a massive man, and, and the way that he uses his body. Terrific Ruckman. Deep an attack for the Suns. There is Witts over the top, only as far as Lazaro. Missed his boot with the ball, but Scott tried to get a kick out of the congestion. It was smothered off the deck now, only as far as Turner. Tried to give the lightning handball to Thomas, but he just fumbled it on the way past. Came to Anderson. Kick wasn't 15. Flying shot on goal out of the congestion. He's missing. And it was Swallow with a minor score. 8 4 52 the Suns. North Melbourne, 7 5 47, 26 minutes gone in this second term. Score from the MCG. Fremantle lead Hawthorne by 23 points, 26 minutes gone in the second term. Well, it was what we were hoping for pre game. The kick out from Mackay, now taken by Roses just outside 50. Kicks a little kick to the pocket and swallowed with a push on. Bailey Scott sees the ball out of bounds. Left forward pocket with the Suns deep in attack. 26 and a half gone. Nine goals in the quarter. And it's been entertaining. It's ebbed and flowed. The Kangaroos with a big comeback. Shallow throw in by the boundary umpire. It was knocked down by Goldstein. Trying to barge his way through was Raoul. He's tackled by a couple of Kangaroos. And a secondary ball up. 
about 20 metres, 25 metres from the Suns' goal. Goldstein just got separation. A little handball by Goda. Now back to Kaur. Kaur's handball over the top, looking for Simpkin. So Simpkin's got a bit of uh, place. It might have been the kick, looking for Greenwood. And it rolls out of play. I think that might have been... Was, this, was that Simpkin? No, that was um, Curtis Taylor with that kick. Rolls out of play right in front of us here. 27 and a half gone. Hugh Greenwood's almost got the job on Charlie Ballard to make sure he's not sitting back in that hole and he's doing a really good job. Ainsworth, Davies, fed the handball out to Butterick and he released Rao, left foot ball, middle of Bell Reef, puts one out in front of Brandon Ellis, gets a kind bounce and sends the Gold Coast Suns inside 50 via a left foot ball. Casbolt was well guarded by Mackay, brought it to ground. On the scene was Roses. Uh, Ellis butted up, got it out to Miller. Now Anderson, he's immediately tackled by Thomas, brought to ground. We'll have a ball up 45 metres out from the Gold Coast Suns goal. By five points, 8 4 52 to the Roos 7 5 47. Up it goes. Witz brought it down. Roses tracks the footy. Ainsworth barreled on through, won the ball, and got it out to Fiorini, who just chips the ball inside 50, where Brandon Ellis marks 45 metres out from goal. 45 degree angle. Really good composure by Fiorini, then could have blazed away, but just had the presence to. To see Brandon Ellis sitting at the back there and uh, was able to just to pop it out to him. And now Ellis has the opportunity to, to give uh, the Suns a little bit more breathing space coming into half time. Brandon Ellis, a veteran of this Suns team in game number 247 from just inside the paint of 50, sends it on its way, he's hit the post. So a minor score for the Suns as Brandon Ellis crashes one into the near post. 8 5 53 now the Suns. They lead by one straight kick, 7 5 47 the Ruse. Deep into the second term for Grandstand AFL. Goda's got the footy at half back. Handball looking for Scott, who had to squeeze the kick down the line. And McPherson got in front and took the mark, did he? No, he didn't. He was just barreled over the line. And it'll be a boundary throw in front of the big scoreboard on the outer side. 8 5 53, the Suns. 7 5 47, North Melbourne. Goldstein and Wits. No one can really get it. Thomas ends up with it. Find the handball. Butterick's got him and he dropped the footy. Good tackle. No, he's dumped him. Dangerous tackle. Oh, dangerous tackle. Well, very lucky, Taron Thomas there. How our game has changed, eh? Mm. Yes. I don't know what Foss would think about this uh, <laughs> sort of stuff, Stephen. Long kick, inside 50. Greenwood with a juggler. He's <laughs> taken the mark. Well, he had about 19 attempts at it, did he, Greenwood? <laughs> it was a hot potato, wasn't it? <laughs> it was like a bit of blancmange in the end, almost splattered on top of in front of his jumper, and he ended up taking it. This would be a really nice one against the flow. Gold Coast have really been coming the last five minutes, and Kangas which just, just mean trying to hold on and hold on, almost coming into half time. This would be a really, really good one to sting. Hugh Greenwood from 45 metres out, slight angle. Don't be worried about the breeze or the angle. Lays back on the kick and is just going to make it through for a behind. Not the best of kicks from uh, Huey Greenwood, but a kangaroo 7-6-48. The Suns 8-5-53, 31 gone in the second turn. Darcy McPherson, the kick in duties. Runs his full measure out of full back and kicks beyond defensive 50 to the near side. Swallow flew through his hands. Waiting at the base was Witz, who fed out a handball to Davies. Tackled by Simpkin. He got it out to Bergman, Lazaro. Now Goldstein, who just sold Ainsworth a bit of candy. Now Lazaro. Curtis Taylor sends a spiral inside 50. Shallow entry. Nobody able to take the mark. Simpkin was absolutely smashed by Matt Rowell. Tried to evade him, and they come in after him to the North Melbourne players. They didn't like it. Rowell very, very enthusiastic in the tackle. He won a free kick for holding the ball. It's going to go to Connor Butterick. The umpire How says, can you the umpire do it. that? You take the free kick, Connor. He can't do that. Well, Matt Ryle is getting scragged and scraped and bashed up by two North get Melbourne players. Yeah. And it's going to come back here to Matt Rowell. That was a bizarre bit of decision making. Wasn't it? <laughs> so Matt Rowell won a holding the ball free kick. He was getting scragged by 
a pair of North Melbourne players, and now Jai Simpkins giving away a 50-metre penalty oh. off the ball as they continue to go in after it. So some aggression just lingering. Jared Witz arrives on the scene. Mac Andrews there as well. All the while, Matt Rowell has the ball in the middle of Bell Reef. <laughs> Over to his mate in Noah Anderson, who sends a potato sack out wide to Brandon Ellis, who's got plenty of time and space to move things to left half forward, where Fiorini marks and on the lead is Swallow. So the Suns move it from one end to the other via a bizarre little patch of play here at right half back. I think you can officially say that escalated quickly. <laughs> it did. <laughs> well, I think you can officially say the game means a little bit to the guys out there as yeah. well. True. I've seen the umpires throw the ball up when there's a blue, but when there's actually a free kick to a guy that's on the bottom of the blue, I've never seen them give the ball to somebody else. Well, I think that was a bit of a, well, I hope this breaks it up, I'll just give it to someone else, but no, that didn't work. Meanwhile, David Swallow is going to kick for goal after the siren, 45 metres out, tight angle. He just misses to the near sky side as the Gold Coast Suns register a minor score on the half-time buzzer and they'll take a one-goal lead into the major break. 8 6 54, the Suns, North Melbourne, 7 6 48. A little bit of spice to finish things off in the first half here at Bell Reeve. The goal kickers for you from here in Hobart for North Melbourne, Nick Larkey has four first-half goals. Curtis Taylor, Paul Curtis and Darcy Tucker all have singles, while for the Gold Coast, two apiece to Flanders and Roses, uh, Swallow, Casbolt, Fiorini and Tuke Miller with one. The leading disposal winners for the Suns, Noah Anderson has 18 first-half possessions, Ainsworth with 16, Fiorini and Rao with 15 apiece for North Melbourne. Bailey Scott has 16 disposals, Cor and Phillips with 15, Jai Simpkin has 14. So the Gold Coast Suns, 8-6-54, lead North Melbourne, 7-6-48. Six points in it at the major break here at Bell Reeve in Hobart. Hope you're enjoying the coverage, Round 24, Grandstand AFL Action for ABC Radio, Sport Digital, News Radio and the ABC Listen app. We're going to take a short break from here at Bell Reeve, send you to the ABC Newsroom. <laughs> ABC News with Satya Weinstein. New South Wales police are investigating if a man was street racing before his car crashed into a tree, leaving two children dead and another injured in Sydney's south. Jean Kennedy reports. A blue Subaru WRX was travelling along the Grand Parade at Monterey just before 10 o'clock last night when it crashed into a tree. Two boys aged 9 and 10 who were passengers in the car were killed. A 33-year-old man believed to be the boy's uncle is currently under police guard in hospital in a serious but stable condition. His 9-year-old daughter has also been injured in the crash. Detective Inspector Jason Hogan says they're investigating whether street racing was a factor. That will be a significant significant line of inquiry for our crash investigators. He's asking the public to help identify a grey sedan which did not stop. Spain's victorious Women's World Cup soccer team are refusing to play if the head of the country's football federation doesn't resign. Luis Rubiales is refusing to stand down after kissing midfielder Jenny Hermoso on the lips after the final in Sydney. The midfielder says the kiss wasn't consensual and made her uncomfortable. The president of the Spanish Football Women's League, Beatriz Alvarez, says Mr Rubiales needs to go. I did not contemplate the option of him not resigning because his ego is greater than his dignity dignity and honour, but I did not imagine that the government would not act forcefully in the face of the social clamour. I think more people are going to join in, but given the lack of determination of Luis Rubiales, other people are beginning to speak out. Wildfires have forced thousands of people to leave the town of Hay River in Canada's Northwest Territories. Authorities have ordered everyone in the town, including emergency workers, to head to the local airport for evacuation. Canada is in the middle of its worst fire season on record. A series of thefts from the British Museum have seen its director, Hartwig Fisher, step down. It comes after Mr Fisher admitted he didn't take warnings about the thefts seriously. Two years ago, an art dealer contacted the museum to report he suspected items were being sold online. British MP Tim Lawton is the chair of the all-party parliamentary group on the museum and says given the size of the collection, it can be hard to keep track of everything.
when you've got over 8 million bits and bobs ranging from the Rosetta Stone to the small sherds of uh, pottery, that is a very big exercise. And obviously, they've been concentrating on those things which are in exhibitions. And the things which appear to be the focus of what's gone missing here are those things held in storage largely for research purposes. Descendants of one of Britain's most famous prime ministers have issued an apology to the South American nation of Guyana for their family's part in the slave trade. Charlie Gladstone, the descendant of four-time British Prime Minister William Gladstone, told an event at the University of Guyana that his family benefited from the African enslavement. As well as the public apology, the Gladstone family is promising to take specific steps to make amends. Pressure is mounting on the Education Union and the South Australian government to Resolve a pay dispute before planned teacher strike next Friday. Candice Prosser has more. An overwhelming majority of education union members voted in favour of industrial action to walk off the job next Friday as part of their push for better pay and conditions. The state government says it's willing to keep negotiating but can't afford to meet the union's demands. Liberal frontbencher John Gardner says an agreement needs to be reached to avoid the strike. What we need to see is good faith bargaining from both sides. What we can't afford is for kids to be missing out on their schooling and it's unacceptable that it's our students and our families that are going to wear the brunt of this strike action. It's still unclear what capacity schools will have to look after children next Friday. Arrangements are expected to be confirmed next week. Surf Life Saving New South Wales are reminding people to swim between the flags following a shark attack on the state's mid-north coast. A 44-year-old man suffered serious leg injuries after he was attacked near Lighthouse Beach at Port Macquarie. He underwent emergency surgery at Port Macquarie Base Hospital before being flown to John Hunter Hospital in Newcastle in a critical condition. Surf Life Saving New South Wales CEO Stephen Pearce says people need to be mindful when entering the water. There's a few things you can do to be shark smart um, to try and prevent yourself from being put in that situation. And that's obviously not swimming or surfing on dawn and dusk um, or in murky water after uh, large storms and, and runoff as well. And yeah, and trying obviously not to surf um, on your own. You're up to date with the very latest from ABC News. You can get more news at any time by downloading the ABC Listen app. With the ABC Listen app, you can take the footy with you wherever you go. Off to walk the dog. Take the footy. Going camping. Take the footy. Picnic in the park. Take the footy. ABC Sports expert coverage of the AFL. Incredible grab. And the NRL. Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Live and commercial free. So whatever you're up to. Take the footy. Take the footy with you on the ABC Listen app. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. In the right forward pocket. So a slow build up, but then in the end, Swallow didn't have too much pressure on him and then just grabbed it at the second take. So David Swallow, been there for a long time. He's been there he all has, the time. Yeah, he? he's been a real uh, warrior for the club. But uh, yeah, it was a slow build up, and uh, you probably thought North should have been able to get back and help out, but. Uh, you shouldn't really have someone in his size taking those marks. His brother played for North Melbourne. Here's Swallow. That's a good-looking kick, and they get their first of the term. Lazaro. Lazaro had a man in short and finds him in uh, Curtis. And Curtis goes in short to Larky. Right good kick. Right out in front of Larky. He was on a full burst. We're right behind it. It's hung on nicely. It's a goal. So North get one back. They needed that goal. They just look so much more dangerous when they're, when they're clean and... They moved the ball quickly. The Gold Coast really struggled to hold them. So it was clean out of the middle. It was quick. And then in all the forwards, you got space to lead into. And, and they just look a lot, so much more dangerous. Turner, lovely little handball to Powell. Powell doesn't know where to go. Thought of a handball four times. Changed his mind six. Oh. And now hits Larky on the chest with a bullet. Stabbing kick by Larky. And the goal umpire says, you've got three, Nick. Taken by Goldstein. He did the rope. He got it to Larky. Oh. He's got four. He dribbled it through, Nick Larky. And he's got four. Kangaroos have got six. We've got a four-point ball game. The 2023 AFL season. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Yes, half-time here at Belrive Oval in Hobart with the Gold Coast Suns hold a six-point lead over 
North Melbourne, 8 6 54, the Suns, 7 6 48, North Melbourne, in what's proving to be a rather uh, entertaining fixture to cap off the home and away season here in Tasmania. The Suns led by 11 points at the first change and got out to as many as 28 points at the nine minute mark of that second term. But North Melbourne, largely via the boot of Nick Larkey, uh, reeled it back in to a six point margin. At the main break. So the Suns 8 6 54 lead North Melbourne 7 6 48. And as I mentioned, Nick Larkey has four first half goals for the Roos. The other game underway as part of round 24 is happening at the MCG. It's between uh, two more teams who won't taste September action uh, this year Hawthorne and Fremantle. And at the major break, there it is the Dockers out to a 29 point lead. Uh, over the Hawks, 8 6 54, Fremantle, <coughs> Hawthorne, 4 1 25. Uh, the goal kickers for you, uh, two to Sonny Walters, Sturt with one, Brayshaw, Emmett Johnson, Switkowski, uh, Tracy, all have one apiece for the Dockers, uh, for the Hawks, all singles, Kaczynski, Moore, Scrimshaw, and Warple. So now the Dockers finishing their season 2023 off. Uh, in fairly impressive fashion, albeit a little, uh, albeit too little, too late uh, for Frio. Uh, Hawthorne, uh, 29 points down at half time at the MCG. Chris Robinham is my name alongside me in commentary for the second half, which is upcoming, is Michael Maney, Stephen Williams, and Jay Schultz. Our experts uh, this afternoon hope you are enjoying the coverage on ABC Radio. ABC Sports Digital, News Radio and the ABC Listen app. As we uh, approach the start of the second half, Stephen Williams, what did you make of the first half? And what's been a, a fairly entertaining encounter, it has to be said, here in Hobart. It has been lots of goals scored. And as, as you mentioned, 28-point lead at one stage. And it looked as if Gold Coast were maybe one goal away from uh, blowing the game open. But um, to North Melbourne's credit, they were able to turn that quarter around and... Um, get a couple of goals in a row, stop that momentum that was going Gold Coast way and then um, for the rest of the quarter certainly got themselves back within striking distance and Nick Lark is the danger up forward, he's kicked four goal two out of their uh, seven goal six and um, uh, been really dangerous but it, it's it been because of um, guys like um, Tom Powell that's been able to win the footy around the middle of the ground, also um, Sheasel's been good and um, Will Phillips, a guy that um, North took as a really high draft pick and it's probably taken a little bit longer to develop than maybe North would have liked, but um, he's, a, he's a guy that's got a lot of composure, seems to have a lot of time. He, he, um, he doesn't look overly quick, but um, it's almost a bit like Scott Penelbury. Guys just run past him when he's got the ball and he knows exactly what's happening around him, so he's been really impressive. And, and on the other side of things, Gold Coast have been served really well by... Um, <clears throat> They're two young guns in the midfield in um, Noah Anderson and Matt Rowe. They're both as good as anybody on the ground today. Flanders had a terrific first quarter, probably dropped out of a little bit in that second quarter, but um, he's certainly been really dangerous. And um, as the small forward up, um, Matt Roses, um, his ability just to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, he's only had a couple of opportunities, but um, has kicked two really nice goals. So everything's set up for a really good finish. It's um, not a lot of people here, but it's a great day for footy. The Oval's in fantastic nick. And, um, yeah, we're seeing a pretty exciting game, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it was a little bit of mirror of the first quarter where, you know, Gold Coast come out hard and then um, the Kangaroos find their legs and peg them back a bit. But what they've also done is they've really pegged back into into the marks and, and sort of taken them up to their own game, um, the Kangaroos. So, you know, uncontested possessions, they were... I think they were about 15, 20 down at, at quarter time, and now they've ended up uh, 10 up. And then same with the marks. They were, they were down by about 10, and now they're two in front. So you can see that they're trying to control the ball a little bit more as well as uh, they were a bit kamikaze in the first quarter. And I, I think particularly in the second half of that quarter, they, they were able to, to, to control that ball and, and put some quick scores on the board. And, you know, it's been a really good game so far. It's really exciting. I hope it continues in the second half and, and it could be a tight finish. Just a word on Matt Rowell. We're told he's broken the all-time tackling record in a single season, home and away season, with 186 tackles. He has five in the first half. And what a way to bring up the record just on 
the, the shadows of half time. An absolute bone cruncher on Jai Simpkin. He won a holding the ball free kick and it sparked a mini melee as well. So uh, Matt Rowe off the back of a uh, 10 clearance, 12 tackle game uh, over North Melbourne uh, back in round six. He's um, bruising the ruse uh, once again here in Hobart. He has five uh, for the half and he's broken, uh, according to the Gold Coast Suns, the all-time tackling record uh, in a single season with that um, bone cruncher on Jai Simpkin. I was going to say, I reckon most of the players that he tackled will probably feel it as well. So. <laughs> when, yeah, he's, a, he's a tough young player, isn't he? But he, he just smashes his body into everything, doesn't yeah. it? So you, you can't imagine he's going to play 300 games. You know, <laughs> he's, he's good enough to do it, but um, <clears throat> whether his body can stand up to that sort of pressure, because you know, as a young man, um, as you get older, you start to feel those bumps and bruises <laughs> that you took early in your career. Yeah, he, he is an absolute uh, raging bull, and uh, he's having an impact uh, this afternoon, uh, that's for sure. It's good to see him just fit and healthy, Matt Rowe, because he has had those Absolutely. injury concerns in the early part of his career, and such high wraps on him as a number one draft pick coming into the league, and he's starting to really reach some of those heights. A reminder, there's more footy for you this afternoon. Uh, from the Gabba, it's Brisbane and St Kilda from 4.35, and then a little later uh, tonight down in Geelong, it's the Cats and the Bulldogs with the Bulldogs with a win and you're in a situation down in Geelong who um, aren't quite at full strength, it has to be said. So full of intrigue, uh, that game. There's another game happening as we speak at the MCG. It's halftime there, and Fremantle... Uh, lead Hawthorne by 29 points. The Dockers 8-6-54. Hawthorne 4-1-25 as uh, the Gold Coast Suns make their way out onto the ground. They're just going through some uh, warm-ups as the umpires make their way out too. Good conditions here for footy for what should be an entertaining second half. Uh, Stephen Williams, it's pretty hard one to pick at the moment, isn't it? There's no team that's dominating or that has the ascendancy. It really has genuinely ebbed and flowed. A little bit of a cliche, but it genuinely has. Both teams have had uh, patches of control throughout. Yeah, they have, and uh, it's probably going to boil down to whether they can stop Nick Larkey, and um, what North Melbourne have done really well is um, Hugh Greenwood's basically gone on Charlie Ballard, and we know Charlie's as good a drop-off marker as there is in the game, and um, he hasn't had a huge influence. I think he's maybe taken one or two intercept marks, but um, Hugh's done a pretty good job on him, so if he can uh, keep Charlie occupied and stop him getting in the hole and uh, opening that space up for Nick Larky, you know, Larky can... He could be looking at eight or nine today, and if he can do that, uh, North are a big chance. Jay, you were looking sort of pre-game for any sort of Damien uh, Hardwick influences on the Gold Coast Suns uh, in this game, whether or not he might have had some suggestions uh, for Stephen King. Have you seen anything sort of play out that, that's looked a little bit different from the Gold Coast Suns' point of view, or has it largely just been business as usual? Well, I think it's probably just more so been business as usual. Um, you know, they, they, they are, they're they trying to control the ball, um, kick mark, kick mark, so they can take that time of possession away from the kangaroos, and it's it, it's serving them pretty well. When they make mistakes and when they turn over the footy is when kangaroos really hurt them. Um, and, you know, Hardwick has had a bit of that at, at Richmond as well, where it was a bit of, you know, we control the play and we control the ball. Um, but, you know, given what he's saying about wanting to, you know, play fast following and 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 run game that's it's probably not what you're seeing out here with the gold coast so i tend to think that it's <coughs> you know business as usual and and just finish off the season with a win yeah both teams certainly are going at it we know about all the commentary surrounding this game coming in around number one draft picks and um, wins not being beneficial uh, to the football club, but uh, as we spoke about in the pre-game, it's a very, very hard thing to get across uh, to the players once they cross the white line and, and once the ball is bounced. Um, anyone accusing the North Melbourne players in particular of not wanting to win this game uh, isn't watching the game because they are going in uh, hell for leather and as hard as they would any other week of the year. And as we heard in the pre-game as well, Lee Adams talking about a player um, like Eddie Ford who's, you know, played... 21 games for the club into his 22nd game and hasn't had a win yet so um, those little moments are worth gold for these North Melbourne young charges as the players make their way out onto the Bell Reeve Oval surface and get into position awaiting the start of this second half the Gold Coast Suns will take a one kick lead to what should be an intriguing second half here in Hobart 8-6-54 the Suns North Melbourne 7-6 
48 as some storylines unfold, one of which is Nick Larkey, who's kicked four first-half goals. I wonder how many he might be able to add in the second half. Just about all set to go. It's quite phenomenal what he's done and to be able to kick that many goals in a season where they have 35 inside 50s every game and they've lost 20 games in a row. Just sort of shows you the calibre of the player that he is. Is it a career high for Nick Larkey? That, that 60, goal? yeah, I would think so. Yeah. yeah, it certainly is. It's the most goals he's kicked uh, in a year. And he's got a few more up his sleeve, I feel, in this second half too. So second half, just about all set to get back underway. Players are waiting in their positions. Crowd <coughs> at the ready. We just await the broadcast requirements and some ground announcing. Umpire all set. Here with Michael Maney. The start of the third term, North Melbourne and Gold Coast. Grandstand AFL from Bell Reef. Six points in favour of the Suns. But this game has got plenty left in it. Cherry from the awkward bounce from the umpire. Falls to Raul who gets it to Anderson. Now to Miller. Miller off the instep. Looking for Swallow, thought he might have got a push. Ellis comes in, can't grab it. Or knock towards Scott of North Melbourne. Now to Phillips. Phillips has got to use his left. Johnston fed the handball to McPherson. Now back to Lemons, who just stands and delivers and gives it to Johnston, who's still on the wing on the outer side for Gold Coast. So Johnston, just his second game of AFL footy, runs off the line, punches inside 50. Up goes Wits, one grab, two, couldn't take it. Roving was Chol, who did it nicely too. And the squaring ball to Andrew, who dropped what he should have taken on his chest. And now it ends up with Thomas, now back to Powell. Gee, that was a mistake. Powell into the centre, it could cost them dearly. Simpkin, just the ball just ran away from him in the end. He tracks it back, now gets it to Tucker by hand on the wing out of side. Tucker kicks inside, 50 for North Melbourne. Larkey, he's got to try and turn Collins around. Collins, oh, he just breaks free from him. Gets the arms free, goes to Powell. Powell goes back to Simpkin. Simpkin around the body. And has it got the journey? No. Ballard right on the line. Touched it through for a behind. What a blue by Mac Andrew. Mac here could have cost a goal. So the Ruse 7749, the Suns 8654. We saw the little leaguers take harder marks, didn't we? Then that one he dropped then. That was a shocker. From the kick in, Darcy McPherson beyond defensive 50, all wrapped up at left half, forward for the Suns. Brandon Ellis taken down by Darcy Tucker. So a ball up. Sherry and Wits, and Wits won it down into the path of Powell. Off the back of the pack was Bailey Scott, who received by hand. His kick inside 50 was misguided as Collins gets back and takes the intercept mark for the Suns. He's got McPherson on short. He just picks the gap and Hits the target. He goes further afield to Noah Anderson. And he'll kick a little further afield again to Flanders, who marks and releases Ainsworth by hand. They move it to left half forward here, the Suns, over the head of Casbold. At the back was Scott, who tracks it towards the boundary, gathered the footy. His handball was picked off by Casbold, but he ran out of tarmac. We'll have a boundary throw in right in front of our broadcast position. Gold Coast Suns lead North Melbourne, 8 6 54 to 7 7. 49, a five-point advantage early stages in the third term from the restart. Phillips showed some class, got through some traffic, released power by hand, and now Bergman off halfback. North Melbourne go across the ground, standing tall was Turner, who could, took a good mark on centre wing out of side. Larkey, a long way from home, marks in the middle of Bell Reeve, gets onto his right boot and sends a long ball towards the goal square. Curtis might have been interfered with. Ford came in, just shrugged the tackle to Lemons, got the handball off to Ainsworth, whose kick just went out of bounds on the full, looking for wits, and it'll be a North Melbourne ball just in front of the interchanges benches near side. Sherry's got it. Wits on the mark, so Sherry kick just sits it up. Where are those long arms from Larky? And no, it's not. It's Ford. <coughs> wow, saw the arms go up and he's got long arms too. He young Ford, isn't he? he? He does and he had a clean run at it. Um, someone fell over in front of him and it just sort of opened up a hole. And there's another blue down in the pocket. I wonder if Matt Rowell's in there. <laughs> this time it's Collins. Someone's got a rip jumper. Collins has got the jumper rip. A la Devon Robertson from last week. Not quite all the way. And he's got a big drag strip down the front of it. Here's Eddie Ford from 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. 
He is working it back. It's a goal. Here they come. And the Kangaroos hit the lead. I don't think they've led all day, the Kangas. And Ford gets his first. And all of a sudden, it's 8.755 to 8.654. Really taken up the challenge, haven't they? They looked uh, down and out, but um, they've been able to fight their way back into the match, and uh, they're standing up physically to the Suns, and um, that was a really nice shot for goal. It just uh, shows he knows the area, he was able to put it out to the right, and it just come in with uh, the slight breeze, and uh, yeah, a really nice finish. They've kicked six of the last seven at North Melbourne. They were down by 28 points. Nine-minute mark of the second term, and they... Now lead by one point. Andrew Cooling has an update from the boundary. Uh, Daniel Halbs is being ready for North Melbourne. They haven't officially activated the sub, but Todd Goldstein has had his jacket on since half time, and he looks to be the man who's going to be subbed out. We might have seen the last of Goldstein. His ruck replacement, Sherry, won it down. Powell, Thomas, and now back to Powell. North Melbourne with another chance out of the middle. She's all their young guns combined. Here's Lazaro, front of the square, inside 50 they go, and he spots up a target in four. That was terrific play, wasn't it? Just uh, in and out of the hands really quickly, cut through the middle of the ground, and uh, Gold Coast weren't able, to, weren't able to stop that thrust forward, and that's as good as we've seen North all day. Yeah, they, you can t it's obvious to tell that there's just a massive focus to quick handball release, that forward handball release, take the, take the man out of the mark, out of the equation, and, and move the ball as quickly as they can. So Eddie Ford with a chance to kick back-to-back -back goals here for North Melbourne and extend the margin to seven points. He'll kick from just inside the paint of 50. No real angle to speak of. He sends it on its way all the way to the line. Two in a minute. No problems whatsoever. And it's getting interesting here in Hobart. 9-7-61 go North Melbourne. 8 6 go the Suns. Who said there was nothing to play for here in Tasmania? North Melbourne extend the lead. Six and a half minutes gone. Third term for Grandstand AFL. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Like North, uh, there's a big prize on the end of finishing bottom. There's no you question West Coast about that. for them at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it can be manipulated from this side. <laughs> there mightn't be the players doing it, but no. um, it'll be interesting to see how this game really uh, pans out. You could be playing with 16 in the last quarter. <laughs> Well, I think Powell's been the catalyst for North Melbourne through that midfield with his ball use by hand and foot. He's really come to life. Back in the centre, Sherry knocks it down. Can they get another centre clearance? Matt Rowell says no. Dave got it to Davies, then knocked on to Miller. Miller's got to spin around, kicks a little uh, half-distance kick, was touched off the boot. Ainsworth ran past it. Here's the man in question, Powell. Now to Schuzel by hand. Back to Scott. Scott looks down. He's got uh, Taylor in his sights. He couldn't take the mark. It then goes back, retrieves it. Gota, which way does he go? Goes with a handball, 50-50, to uh, Powell, who had to release really quickly under pressure. Fiorini, now here come the Suns. Little chip kick to uh, Rosas. Now Chol, Chol lines them up, shoots at goal, and pops it through. Quick ball movement by the Suns. A couple of mistakes by the Ruse. And Marbior Chol brings it back to a point. He gets his first goal of the afternoon. And the scoreline reads, North Melbourne 9761, Suns 9667, nearly eight minutes gone, second, third term. It was just one handball too many. They had they've moved the ball really well until about you know 65 metres out. And you can see Larky, he actually had his man done in front and they just needed to get it into him and they went for one too many handballs and, and unfortunately turned that over and bang straight down the other ground. It's probably just that little bit of pressure from Gold Coast was able to make Tom Powell probably give that ball off when he didn't need to. There wasn't anybody there. And uh, from that point on, it was all up to Gold Coast. And Marvio Chol, um, geez, he's a talented player. The way he kicks the footy, he's such a smooth mover. A nice finish. North Melbourne by a point from the restart. Rao rips it out of the middle, takes a bounce as he streams away from an opponent. He'll send the Suns inside 50 once again. Burgess knocked it down only as far as Perez of North Melbourne. They come up with it here through uh, Mackay. And Bailey Scott takes the mark in the defensive goal square. Across the ground he comes. He wanted Taylor, who marks strongly in front of his face at right half back, just inside the boundary line. Andrew Cooling on the boundary. Todd Goldstein's taken the jacket off. He still hasn't come on the ground nine minutes into the quarter, but he hasn't been subbed out, and he's set to go on it, would say. Interesting. 
boundary side as the kick across the ground is good. Mackay Mark still inside the defensive 50 here, North Melbourne. Short ball was measured and good to Perez, who wants to go. Outer side was the target. Powell was there. McPherson got in the way, fist in, and knocked over the boundary line. So a ball in in front of the hill. 9660 the Suns. North Melbourne lead here. 9761. Nine and a half gone. Goldstein Third didn't, turn. didn't come on the ground to the 10 minute mark of the first term, mm. so he spent yeah. a lot of time on the bench during break. So from the boundary throw in, Thomas just rides Miller into the ground and another ball up. One point the margin in favour of North Melbourne. Ten minutes gone in the third term. Wits from the ball up. Phillips by hand to Sheasel. Quick hands to Lazaro. Lazaro off a step. Ballard just chops that off and takes the mark. And the umpires... Touched off hands, I think. Touched off hands, was yeah. it? So then there was a stalemate and there'll be a ball up. So another ball up, in goes Raul, tries to feed it out to Butterick. He can't grab it. Tucker, handball to Taylor. Taylor's tackled. Roses tried to get it to Miller. Little handball over Butterick, just tapped it towards Ainsworth. Back to Roses, who's hard up against the boundary and uh, took it out, then dropped it. Said The umpire said play on, and now it's out of bounds. That was interesting. Mm. I thought that went out of bounds. Yeah, a couple of different things at play there I'm not sure everything was uh, done by the book but it'll be a boundary throw right where the 50 metre line meets the boundary and it comes, Wits won it down Thomas will get there first, he's tackled by Miller he somehow kept it in, eludes another tackler, outside of the right boot this would be something, across the face of goal eludes everybody, pitches in front of a pack of players and eventually bounces out for a boundary throw in two metres around from North Melbourne's left hand behind post and somebody's gone down deep in attack it might be Larky as the North Melbourne faithful spy a free kick and it looks like Larky's going to kick for his fifth after he was dumped after the ball had gone out of play, and he was. That was just that was silly. He just went after him and just dropped him. So maybe some frustration from Collins as Larky's on the runway. He approaches from 15 metres out, slight angle, and pops it straight through. He's got a pack of five, and North Melbourne are out by seven points. 10 7 67 the Roos. Gold Coast 9 6 60. 12 and a half gone third term for Grandstand AFL. Jay Schultz. Yeah, I think uh, I think they've got him a little bit frustrated here. They've come out, hit him hard at the start of this quarter, and um, whereas the Gold Coast in the first two quarters were the ones that jumped the gun. So Kangaroos have definitely come out ready to go in the second half, and, and you can tell by it's on the scoreboard now. And, and you know, the Gold Coast seemed to be a little bit frustrated. That was just that was just silly play. There was no need to do it. And he, just give him a whack for no reason. Charlie Ballard was the Ballard, player, and he, yeah. he probably is a bit frustrated because Hugh Greenwood's been making it difficult for him to influence the game, and um, yeah, Nick Larkey would uh, be very happy to get those sort of frees. Andrew Callings on the boundary. Rory Atkins has just been subbed into the game for the Gold Coast Suns. I think Johnson, the man off, I'll get confirmation on that. Thanks, Andrew. Back in the centre. Tucker gets a handball to Goldstein, back to Tucker. It's still in the centre square. Bergman on the handball, wider out to Goder, who has a bounce. He might have another. No, he doesn't. He kicks long inside 50. He's lucky! He's dear, oh dear, he's leading the Mamari dance down there. Nick Larky, and he'll shoot, and they're on for the push and shove again. And Collins has got the teapot going on, hands on hips bereft of ideas as to what to do but Nick Larkey lining up for goal number six in a 13 point lead that was a beautiful kick to him as well from 30 metres out he stabs and puts it through Larkey's got six and the Roos are out by 13 points and they go to Nick Larkey and so they should he's having one hell of a day down forward for the Kangaroos 11-7-73 Suns 9-6-60 he was actually out of position. He was on the wrong side, and, and the kicker pulled the kick back inside, which put him in prime position. It was a brilliant kick to him. Just exchange again through the middle. The Suns aren't able to 
get enough pressure around North Melbourne to force that turnover in the middle and those quick hands are opening them up and it's going in there quickly. Dare I say Nick Larky could kick 10. <laughs> well, he has half a dozen and he has 12 in two weeks, does Nick Larky. Don't forget he kicked six against Richmond last week at the MCG. And another six here in Hobart this afternoon, 14 minutes in to the third term. So you would think he's not done with yet. The Gold Coast will have their say as Davies goes out of the middle for the Suns. Inside 50, Kaz Bolt off the pack was Ainsworth. There's a free kick here. It's going to come back to North Melbourne. And everything just coming up for the Ruse at this point. Ben Mackay gets up a little gingerly and he'll take a free kick inside the defensive 50. It's against Kaz Bolt. Just tuning in, North Melbourne lead by 13 points. And we're down by 28. Nine minutes into the second term. As Dawson marks at left half back for North Melbourne. Had Phillips on short, ignores him. Kicks to the outer wing. Good one in front of Simpkin, who marks and turns and assesses. Wanted to go on quickly, but then just raises the finger and says, I'm going to pump it long, and he does exactly that. It's a Goldstein at left half forward. Couldn't quite reel it in. Go to spun out and then into trouble. He's tackled and will have a ball in. 75 metres out from goal. Left half forward for North Melbourne, who lead by 13 points. Off the ruck contest was Anderson. Tackled, but managed to get boots a ball. Out in front of Swallow. Hassled by Simpkins. Swallow went in after it again. Got it to Ellis. Simpkins laid a tackle. He was dispossessed. Fiorini now gathered the loose footy and poked a short ball up the line to Chole. He takes the mark. In front of Dawson, left foot ball towards right half forward for the Suns. Casbolt just juggled it on the bounce, got it up to Ellis, but they've turned it over here. Sheezel, it was ripped off his handball. Back with the Suns, now Ellis, misdirected kick inside 50. It'll be out of bounds for a ball in. 25 metres around from goal. Andrew calling on the boundary. Confirmation on the Gold Coast sub. Sean Lemons was the man who's made way. Purely a tactical sub, no injury. Thanks, Andrew. So Atkins, who's been a real player for them the last few weeks, lucky to lose his place in the starting 22. Lazaro, little handball to Greenwood. Ballard's got him. They've been playing pretty close together, as Chris mentioned earlier. In fact, it was Stephen. So a ball up. Out of side. Gold Coast slightly in attack. Burgess this time knocks it down to Anderson. Anderson quickly on the boot. Casbolt's there with Mackay. Mackay will want the line and gets it. Right forward pocket. Gold Coast in attack. We've been going 17 minutes in the third term. North Melbourne 11 7 73. The Suns 9 6 60. From the boundary throw in. Goldstein knocks it down shark by Swallow to Ellis. Flying shot at goal by Ellis. It's got some legs, but Mackay gets there with a late fist and knocks it through for A behind. 12 points the margin now. The Suns 9862. The Kangas 11-7-73. Sheasel out of full back, takes a bounce and then plays on by hand. A little risky here as Sheasel received the handball back, then lost his footing, and the Suns will come up with it, but Sheasel picks Flanders pocket. Back in the hands of the Ruse. The kick is ill-directed outside of the defensive 50. And Darcy McPherson <laughs> takes the defensive mark. Flanders marks it. Right half forward. He's probably two kicks from goal. So Flanders is just going to set it up to a dangerous position. Casbold will be the target. Got to the front. Flew. Chole at ground level. Couldn't gather the footy. Sheasel has to fight hard. Out of the congestion. I think it was Fiorini. Quickly got boots a ball and put it through, but we're going to go upstairs and have a look at it. Was it touched off the boots? North North players seem fairly confident, I was, don't they? They're all tapping their hand. Yeah, I think Sheasel might have got a hand to it. A lunging hand. He was on all fours in the goal square and just got a hand across the boot of Fiorini. Not sure what the soft call was. Did we see that? No. I think it was straight upstairs. So as we just await. All the players are just setting up for a kick in, so. Hey. 
Gold Coast definitely Gold Coast definitely lifted in the last five minutes. So their pressure around the ball. Um, and they're getting repeat inside 50s at the moment. So a minor score, the Fiorini shot on goal, touched off the boot on the last line by Sheasel. Will take the kick in for North Melbourne. Gold Coast 9862, trail the Roos 11773, 19 and a half, gone third turn. Sheasel long, Casbolt found his way to the front, couldn't take the mark. Well done by Collins, got it back. Kick was, uh, Butterick's kick was smothered, in goes Choll, ended up getting a little toe poke on it, taken by Ford, he's kicked a couple of goals in this quarter Ford. he's at half back and goes inboard to Bergman, Bergman's kick oh, found uh, Phillips in the end Phillips with a handball away to Thomas, he's got to get around a couple, got it back to Phillips, Phillips with the he kick, looking for Larky that is wonderful running football by the Kangaroos they worked it from half back and got it in the hands of good ball distributors and it's also in the hands of their best goal kicker in Nick Larkey, who's lining up for goal number seven. Will Phillips once again just cruising through the middle of the ground there. Really nice use of the footy. And uh, Nick Larkey licking his lips when he sees the ball coming through quickly like that. He's pushed a couple right today from a little bit further out than this. So let's see if he can get this one on target for goal number seven. It's hanging in there. It's a goal. Larky's got seven, and the Kangaroos are out by 17. What's his best? Probably about that, isn't it? I would have thought. We'll go for the... I reckon he would have kicked nine. Again? Just a guess. <laughs> Maybe he gets ten. <laughs> well, he's got seven now. He's kicked three goals in this term, Nick Larky. 12-7-79 plays 9-8-62. Seven is his best. Oh, here we go. Best. So that was against Sydney last year. So an equal career best, seven majors for Nick Larkey. And isn't this a story unfolding here in Hobart? North Melbourne out by 17 points. 21 and a half gone in this third term. And they've absolutely dominated across this third term so far. Back in the middle we go at ground level. Thomas pounces on a loose footy handball out now to Turner. Not out of jail yet. Butterick hassles him. They force the turnover to the Suns. It came out to Brandon Ellis. Handball over the top now to Davies who just weaves past Thomas with a little bit of class. Kick inboard was a little bit dangerous but good enough to the bootlaces of Roses. His kick across the ground was dangerous though and it's picked off by the sub. There is he? There Dan he is. Handball oh. <laughs> over the top to Ford. Lazaro. Simpkin inside 50. Tumbler towards the goal square. Suns have the numbers. Davies eludes a tackler. Got it back to Andrew of the Suns. And the relieving ball out to Butterick, who marks in the right back pocket for the Suns. Andrew cooling on the boundary. Yeah, it was just trying to get uh, who Daniel Howard came on for. It was Curtis Taylor who he's been subbed on for. So that sub's been officially made. He was sensing number eight then, wasn't he, Nick Larky? Well, he, he, he had him on, too. He was on the lead. He was clear, but uh, they just didn't see him. <clears throat> just in that little, that sneaky little lead into the forward yeah. pocket, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and one handball too many, and that yeah. took, took him out of position. So, after all of that, the ball is out of play. On the outer side wing. Boundary throw in. Sherry's got some work to do here. Shark by Miller. Miller gets clear. Handball was uh, looking for Atkins. Missed the target. Miller's got to go and clean up his own mess. And then his little kick uh, was a real worm burner. Lazaro, another handball away to Ford. Ford squeezes the kick out to Simpkin. Now Simpkin from about 45 on the run. Long kick has popped it through. The Roos are out by 23. Well, we I reckon it means something. It's going to be hard to drop this one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the uh, the Suns are the ones that have decided that oh, we want to finish uh, in a lower spot. They were 28 points up. Now they're 23 points down. It's uh, what a turnaround, but North have just been terrific with the way that they've been able to win the ball and then just quickly get it forward. And uh, yeah, their forward line is open and uh, looking really dangerous. They've flipped the switch from earlier on in the game where they were fumbling and Gold Coast were clean. Now they're putting, you know, good pressure on Gold Coast and they seem to be fumbling the ball and making little scares. And Kangas are just clean and just going quick as soon as they get the ball. Freeman are out by 22 points against Hawthorne at the MCG. 26 minutes gone in the third term in that game. In the eyes of the AFL world, you would think, would be right here on this game in Hobart as Took Miller 
Bursts out of the middle and kicks wide to Flanders, who marks on centre wing. Gone out of it too, Flanders. He has, hasn't he? He was the dominant player in the first quarter. Yep. Wheels around onto his right boot, sends the Gold Coast inside 50. Kasbolt can't get access. It came down to Burgess, flying b- shot on goal. Needed a kind bounce. It's through for a minus score. So 9-9-63, the Suns move to. They trail North Melbourne 13-7-85. 25 minutes gone, third term. So Gota with the long kick to half back, And we can take it. Mess cleaned up by Ford, got it to Sherry by hand. And Sherry of the handball to Phillips, who just kicks a real up and under kick to the wing ball. Flicks over the back. Flanders is first there. Thought about a little kick, just went the 15. Up, I said no. The kick was marked in the end by Fiorini. And the other said it was not 15 metres. Noah Anderson can't believe it. But it will be a ball up. Sherry. And Wits, both of them miss it. Anderson might have copped one. No free kick. Simpkin missed it. And then Rao got it to Flanders. Now to Miller. Miller just spins on a sixpence and then kicks looking for Swallow. But uh, getting back is Casbolt. Big Levi. His dad used to be a policeman in Tasmania. Big Levi went for the handball. And uh, he went for the handball. The umpire hadn't played on. The North Melbourne player went to smother it and he gets 50. Unlucky, wasn't he, Aiden Call there? He's... uh just reacted, which any player would do when a, a guy goes to play on, and um, it was a right decision, but unfortunately the umpire hadn't called play on. As I said, Levi Casbolt uh, was working for a television network here in Tasmania going back a few years ago and had to interview a policeman, and uh, who did I interview? Levi Casbolt's dad. He <laughs> shoots for goal and pops it through. So Casbolt gets his second goal of the afternoon, and the Suns get one back. Boy, do they need that one. 13-7-85, North Melbourne. The Suns, 10-9-69. He's been pretty well held, actually, Levi. He's looked, he looked dangerous early, but um, full credit to the North Melbourne defenders, particularly McKay and Core. I think they've done a good job on uh, Chole and um, big Levi Casbolt just to keep their influence pretty minimal. Andrew Callings on the boundary. No, Anderson just in the hands of doctors at the moment. He copped a finger in the eye from Will Phillips there, so he's just getting looked at at the moment, but uh, stayed down for a, a moment afterwards and looks quite a nasty one. If they're going to win this game, Gold Coast, they'll probably need Noah Anderson out there, being one of their prime movers this afternoon. Back in the middle it goes. Thomas gets first hands to it, thought about the handball, and then released Bailey Scott off half back, who streams forward, kicks a ball just to green grass at right half forward in front of Greenwood, who went in and got it. He's tackled by a pair of Suns. Ruse come up with it now. Underground ball from Scott is chopped off. Suns have it through Ballard, whose kick is smothered. Out of bounds it goes. We'll have a ball in. 60 metres around from North Melbourne's goal, 13-7-85, the Ruse. Gold Coast, 10-9-69. Got eyes on Noah Anderson. On the interchange bench, you've got an errant finger in the eye. It's somehow off the deck. Witt's got boots a ball. It spills out to Ford, who won a handball out. Just missed Simpkin. Davies is there to mop up for the Suns. Cuts back inside traffic and gives it to Rao. He's at half back. Kicks into the middle of the ground. A wonderful mark going back by Ainsworth, releases Fiorini, left foot wobbler inside 50, is a terrible kick he wanted Swallow on the lead but he did him absolutely no favours and it bounces out of bounds for a ball in that was a waste there, around from Gold yeah. Coast goal he had Swallow streaming out back to goal and he had about 5-10 metres on his man from the boundary throw in Sherry knocks it down ends up with Miller Wits Saw Roses. Now he's normally good from here. Roses this way, that way. Got it to Flanders. Flanders from the impossible angle. Just sits it up. Might have been a free kick. Away there to Burgess for a push, but nothing doing. Dawson was the man to take the mark and then release the footy out wide. So away they go again through Goda, North Melbourne to the wing. This is a good build up. Tucker's got it. Has a bounce. Inside 50. Long kick. The target's forward. Can he take the mark? No. On his fingertips. Away comes Mac Andrew. Got the handball away to Fiorini. Fiorini's little short kick might spot up Miller. Well done, Gold Coast, because North were on a full burst there and they've been kicking goals from that particular play, but they couldn't get it. Ford couldn't take the mark and Miller's got it. Little handball away. Nice short little kick by Fiorini and finds 
his man in Casbolt. Casbolt wants to go into the centre of the ground. The kick's got some hang on it, but that's OK. It's been marked. And by McPherson, away to Rao. Short ball is good. Rao gets things moving immediately. Finds Ellis at right half forward. Too far out to score. He moves things further afield to the sub in Atkins, who's 65 from goal. He's going to wheel around onto his left boot, put the ball into a dangerous position. It's all North Melbourne. Big fist from Mackay at the back. It came down to Simkin, who just hacked it onto the boot. Wanted Curtis on the oh. outer side. It came down to Tucker. He might have just held Johnston in the contest. Umpire said no. Ellis arrives, lays a tackle. Gold Coast have the numbers. Atkins comes up with it. Handball over the top now to McPherson, who just pops a pitching wedge over the top to Flanders, who marks at right half forward for the Suns. Deep into this third turn. What have the Suns got? Can they pinch one back in the shadows of three-quarter time? Inside 50, they go Burgess the target. Core got across, knocked it out of bounds. In fact, it might have been out of bounds on the full. Yep. It'll be a, a North Melbourne free kick. As the <laughs> patron just retrieves the ball and hands it over the fence to Ben Mackay. It's a real test now for the Gold Coast. They were the favourites coming into it. They had themselves almost a five goal lead so um, they've got to show a bit of metal and show what their club's worth to them short kick by Mackay was marked by Gota who's to Ford who's looked dangerous all day Eddie Ford as he's worked his way into the game a little handball to Perez Ooh. who was running past who got dumped by Roses but no free kick down the line Larky just uh, took a lunge forward and the umpire said uh, in the back it's always a contentious one isn't it we saw one two minutes ago up here in the against uh, Gold Coast where they same sort of thing, a push out, but sometimes they pay it, sometimes they don't, it's quite frustrating Lucky well, got the free kick and shorted it away to Powell now Powell, what's he got in front of him he's going to kick it to the goal square Goldstein, can't take the mark Tucker, roves it off the pack desperately tried to get it to his boot, well done Raoul. got it to Ellis, now back to Johnston who thought about Ellis and then decided to kick the footy and then turned it over Powell's everywhere at the moment. Here he goes. You're going to pump it deep inside 50. High ball. A lot of players in there. Curtis couldn't take the mark. Off the back. Flanders. Got it to Johnston. Johnston's half little dribbling kick. He's OK to Ellis. Ellis back to Flanders. Gee, they're under pressure. The Gold Coast. But they might just relieve it now. And the mark's taken. I think that is Swallow down there. Or is it Butterick? It's Butterick. So Butterick goes short, dangerously, across the face of goal and finds Andrew. Andrew comes to the near side. Found a target in McPherson who kicks up the line to Davies, who takes a really strong mark, in fact, in front of Perez. Right in front of the interchange benches. Dan Howe, the sub, mans the mark as Davies comes off his line and sends the Suns to half forward. Who can take a mark here for the Gold Coast? Nobody. At the base of the pack, though, was Miller. And now Roses slung as he kicked. Bouncing ball will fall for Swallow. In on goal. Right foot kicks a shocker. He misses everything. Out of bounds on the full. Chance goes begging for David Swallow on the Gold Coast. No score as they bring it in from full back. The roofs. Oh, why didn't kick a drop punt? He's running straight towards goal. Yeah, yes, that's good proof costly when they're all counted at the end of the game and he's gone holding the ball ball has found its way to half back for North Melbourne and a free kick's going against the Kangaroos it's going against Tucker and it's going to Noah Anderson good to see him back out there 32 nearly 33 minutes gone Anderson just sits it up and picking it off his Dawson who had a calf injury early in the game and he's got his left shoulder strapped so he's in the walls Dawson but he's fighting through it and he's taken the mark right on three quarter time with the Kangaroos leading this game 13-7-85 the Suns 10-9-69 six goals to two in that third quarter so North Melbourne really getting the job done so a 16 point lead at three quarter time to the home team North Melbourne so it was an 11 point advantage to the Gold Coast at quarter time, six points at half time, but what a swing it was in that third term, highlighted by three goals to Nick Larkey. He has seven for the game, and he was a big part of that turnaround. North Melbourne lead by 16 points. Quickly whipped through the goal kickers here. North Melbourne, Larkey has seven, and then 
Eddie Ford has two. Singles to Simpkin, Taylor, Curtis and Tucker. Off of the Gold Coast, Casbolt and Flanders and Roses have two apiece. Swallow, Chol, Fiorini and Miller with one. Just a quick score update from the MCG. Three-quarter time there also. Fremantle will lead Hawthorne by 28 points. 11-8-74 the Dockers to the Hawks, 7-4-46. But here at Bell Reeve, a super interesting result potentially unfolding here in Hobart. North Melbourne lead Gold Coast, 13-7-85 to the Suns, 10-9-69. Final quarter of both clubs' seasons about to get underway on the other side of this. Since time began, humans have asked the big questions. Does feeling cold make you more likely to catch a cold? Is my phone secretly listening to me? Should you keep a tomato sauce in the fridge? Any question you ask, these humans will find you the facts. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Whatever it takes. What the FAQ starts Wednesday, August 30 on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Eddie Ford from 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. He is working it back. It's a goal. Here they come. And the Kangaroos hit the lead really taken up the challenge haven't they they looked uh, down and out but um they've been able to fight their way back into the match and uh, they're standing up physically boundary throw in two meters around from north melbourne's left hand behind post and somebody's gone down deep in attack it might be larky he approaches from 15 meters out slight angle and pops it straight through he's got a pack of five and north melbourne are out by seven points. Goder has a bounce. He might have another. No, he doesn't. He kicks long inside 50. A, Lucky! Dear, oh dear, he's leading the Mamere dance down there. From 30 metres out, he stabs and puts it through. Lucky's got six. Phillips with a handball away to Thomas. He's got to get around a couple. Got it back to Phillips. Phillips with the kick. Looking got for him. Lucky. It's hanging in there. It's a goal. Lucky's got seven. The 2023 AFL season. On radio, ABC Sport Digital. And now streaming on the ABC Listen app. 13785 North Melbourne lead the Gold Coast 10 9 69. The Roos up by 16 points after trailing by a goal at half time and 11 points at quarter time. All eyes will be on. Bell Reeve Oval in this fourth and final term. So much at stake for the North Melbourne Football Club. A genuine conundrum unfolding, it has to be said, uh, for the Roos, who are playing some pretty good footy, it has to be said. The highlight has been Nick Larkey. He has seven goals to three-quarter time. I wonder if he can get the 10-pack with three in the last quarter. All eyes will also be on him. Uh, a quick update from the MCG. Fourth and final term underway between the Dockers and the Hawks. And it's Fremantle uh, out by 27 points. They lead 11-8-74 to Hawthorne's 7-5-47. But the story is unfolding here in Hobart, where North Melbourne lead the Gold Coast Suns in their final game of the season to potentially arrest a 20-game losing streak. Stephen Williams, what have you made of it so far? Well, it's been a, a game of momentum changes, hasn't it? We thought we saw the um, Gold Coast go 28 points up in that second quarter, but um, North were able to kick 6-2 to two in that quarter with uh, Larky being... Uh, a big part of that so um it's a test for both clubs isn't it we know what's at stake for the north melbourne side if they win they obviously finish second if uh, uh second last if if the uh, west coast eagles lose to the crows tomorrow so um they've got decisions to make and gold coast um wouldn't want to lose to the potential bottom side of the competition in their last game of the year either so um what are we looking at? 16 points at half time. So certainly it's, a, it's within range with the momentum swings we've seen in this game. Sides have kicked four and five goals on the trot. So um, Gold Coast certainly winning the contested possession inside eight by 18, but outside 25 uncontested possessions in favour of um, North Melbourne. And Jay mentioned it uh, in the break. Um, marks inside 50, 16 to North Melbourne and only six to the Gold Coast. So that's an area that um, 
the Gold Coast have to be a little bit better when they're moving the ball inside their forward 50. They've kicked 11 of the last 14 goals have North Melbourne. And Jay Schultz, fans would be asking, where has this been all season? Oh, absolutely they would be. And they just, they, they look, it's almost like the shackles are off a bit as well. Last game of the year and let's have a crack at it. I mean, they get, they're getting beaten in stoppages everywhere by the Gold Coast Suns and contested possessions. But the Gold Coast just can't contain them. They can't contain their speed. And once they turn over the ball and go, just, there's nothing the Gold Coast can do to stop them. Well, from the bounce, being taken away by Sheasel. Sheasel kicks long, almost a mark, I think, uh, to Greenwood. Yes, it was. Held onto it. Greenwood just gives it away to uh, a teammate in Tucker. Tucker oh. kicks inside 50. Target to, there was Curtis. Couldn't take the mark. Well done, Ainsworth. Ainsworth got it to Atkins. Back to Miller. So Miller kicks down the line, left footer, but it's been turned over. And Scott takes the mark for North Melbourne. So North Melbourne, gee, a goal early for them would be crucial. He kicks inside 50. Up they fly. Ford couldn't take it. Off the pack. Larky somehow got it to Thomas. Check side hit the post. Wow. He's been... You can tell there's something with yeah. Tom, Thomas, isn't there? Yeah, he's, yeah absolutely. He's a, he is a player. So uh, a behind 13.86 plays 10.969. It is coming back. Dan Howe chops off the kick from full back and North Melbourne are in possession. 55 metres out from goal here. Harry Sheasel with ball in hand and he can put North Melbourne to a really dangerous spot and he does exactly that. Larky flies from 2 deep off, hands forward, his handball's picked off by Rao, who just scrambles the ball outside defensive 50, getting back and taking a really strong defensive mark with Scott and he picks out a target inside the forward 50 in Turner and Bailey Scott is having some sort of second half of this year so impressive is Bailey Scott. He's really found himself a niche across half back, and the mark and the kick inside 50 was an absolute treat. Kane Turner here to extend the margin out to 23 points. He gives off to a runner around the back. It was Aiden mm. Core from absolutely wow. nowhere. <laughs> Who had that on their bingo card? <laughs> Aiden Core from 55 on the run. Puts it through post high. It was bound to happen. It was pressure, pressure, repeat, repeat inside 50. And it, when you're having three, four, five inside 50s back to back, you just get more and more tense, the backmen do, and, and they were able to find a good target. But that was a beautiful handball and long kick goal outside 50. When Aiden Kors taking handball receives and drilling <laughs> goals from 55, you know it might just be your day. 14-8-92 North Melbourne, 10-9-69 the Gold Coast Suns. I can tell you what. Ask on fourth and final turn, Michael Money, they can't possibly, can they, I North don't, Melbourne? I don't think that's been a set play all year because Aiden Four hasn't scored a score this year. His uh, first goal of the year. I think I can hear West Coast screaming. That's uh, something else. Back in the centre, so 23 points the margin now. So the uh, Kangaroos, they are right in this. Oh. Atkins dropped the footy and North will go forward yeah, again win. through forward. Just swarming all over them, aren't they? Yeah. Just the, the pressure that uh, perhaps wasn't there early in the game. They're dominating them now. Greenwood with the tackle, hands it off to Ford. Oh, Ford kicks it. long. Yeah. Ball just flicks over the back. Here's a chance for Curtis. Can't reel it in. Left forward pocket boundary throw in. North in attack. They are full of running. Gold Coast, all they're doing at the moment is trying to put their finger in the damn wall yeah. to stop it. As the ball will be thrown back in. 14.892 to 10.969. Shallow ball in. Raul tackled, got the handball away. Flanders caught by Thomas. He drives him into the turf. And another ball up. It's about 35 metres from the North Melbourne goal. They are going like winners at the moment, the Kangas. Up it goes. <laughs> Greenwood tries to knock it down. Raul, oh, turned over. Goes to Curtis. This way, that way. Oh. Pushes off. Don't oh. argue. Oh, the uh, check side was smothered. And then the loose kick comes out. And Howe just sits under a high ball. And from just outside, he's attacking 50. Daniel Howe takes the mark. That would have been something from Paul Curtis. Oh, he did everything apart from finish it, didn't he? He's got a good dance step, has Curtis. He's going to be something else in the next few years, I reckon. And Daniel Howe. How he's decided I'm going to have a shot at this, the former Hawk. Has he got the leg? Well, he All should right. be fresh. <laughs> he's been a sub. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> so let's see what happens. 
from just outside 50. Winds up. Gives it everything. It's a good looking kick. It's not going to make it. And it's off hands for A behind. So North moved to 14,993, 10,9,69, the Suns. 24 points the margin and even four goals here at Bell Reef. North Melbourne searching for just their third win of the year. Can they break a 20 game skid? Atkins out of full back for the Gold Coast Suns. Takes a bounce, kicks beyond defensive 50. Can't find a target though. Sheasel comes up with it for North Melbourne. Handballs back to Perez and he kicks a short ball to right half forward where Kane Turner takes the mark. Central ball now in the lucky direction. Had two to beat. Brought it to ground did Thomas. He's immediately wrapped up by Butterick. Got rid of him. Somehow fed out a handball. Curtis arrives on the scene. Couldn't win clean possession. Thomas goes in again. Butterick gets him. Curtis goes in once more. He's tackled by Atkins who can't quite bring him to ground but does enough to hold him up and win a holding the ball free kick. There's Atkins the sub. So they come up with it deep in defence here at the Suns. They'll need to get their skates on here and launch some sort of an attack if they're to win this game. Short ball into Noel Anderson who marks in the right back pocket for the Gold Coast. Straddles the boundary and kicks beyond defensive 50 to a contest. Mackay gets in front for North Melbourne. Knocks it to ground. It was taken by Butterick. He was taken. It came out to Dan Howell. Missed his boot with the ball. At ground level was Rao. Up to Miller. Tackled by Phillips. Got a handball out and the Gold Coast have it on the outside via Anderson. Takes a bounce and sends a really neat ball to right half forward. Roses marks. Looks Core in the eye, dashes away and spots up a target inside 50. It'll be Joel who takes the mark. 30 metres out, slight angle. Chance to just narrow the margin here back to 18 points. That's what happens when the opposition press up like that. If you can get it over the back, then uh, you're off to the races. And Gold Coast had a couple of players in space. And the, the kick over to Roses was fantastic to release him. And then he had the poise to find Chow. So they need this one, the Suns, and they need it desperately. Mabior Chol has won for the afternoon. Slow and deliberate approach, and it's gun barrel straight. He kicks his second as Chol, and my oh my, didn't the Suns need that one? They cut the margin back to 18. 14 9 93 the ruse. Gold Coast 11 9 75. Seven and a half gone. Fourth and final turn for grandstand AFL Stephen Williams. One against the flow, really, wasn't it? We we saw North dominate territory for the first six minutes of that quarter, but um, as I mentioned, Gold Coast were able to get it out, and once they got it out, uh, they looked pretty pretty damaging, so that's going to be their task for the rest of the, May, the game. The uh, North Melbourne Footy Club have taken that uncontested kick away from the Gold Coast, and they're able to chip the ball down the ground, so they're going to have to find something a little bit different. It's going to be these mids. It's going to be Rao. It's going to be... Um, in there with uh, big wicks as well to try to get the ball out of the middle. 18 points the margin. What have the Gold Coast got in them? From the ball up, which tries to funnel it forward. Ends up with Lazaro of North Melbourne. He just throws it on the boot. High. Collins got the front position, couldn't take the mark. Has to go back and try and win it again. In goes Simpkin. Atkins got it to McPherson. Now to Flanders. Flanders thought of this side of the ground and then changed his mind and flicked it out wide and couldn't find Ellis as it rolls out of play in front of the big Tasmanian sign out there. It'll be a ball in. What have the Gold Coast got? They only trail by 18 points, but they, what, they, they led by 28 points at the nine-minute mark of the second term, so they've really coughed it up. Free kick is going in the ruck contest mm. against Wits. It's going to Goldstein. Goldstein, just outside 50, is going to pump them long. Long kick by Goldstein. I thought Larky was being held. No free kick. In goes Flanders. Nice and clean. That was terrific pick up away to Ellis. And then Ellis finds Davies on the outer side halfback flank. Still inside his defensive 50. Let's see if the Gold Coast can... Mountain attack off half-back. Davey kicked to a contest. It was knocked down only as far as Godin. Now Lazaro and a chance here for North Melbourne. Simpkin marks, gives it off to Thomas. Little ball right. around the body. He's got a one-on-one. -on -one. Larky in the goal square. Couldn't quite take the mark. Greenwood did he get boots and ball. He tumbled it through. We're going to go upstairs. Looked a goal. The little dribbling oh. kick from Greenwood. He looked 
to have just got it over the line unless it was immediately touched off the boot. He's not overly excited about it if he did kick it. Oh, well, I should have think he doesn't know. I think he got it under the arms of Charlie Ballard. Well, now he's happy. He well, he's got it now. Well, maybe it come off his knee. The Kangaroos have just completely taken away the short mark control game that the Gold Coast are playing in the first half and they're just making a bomb long down the line and the Kangaroos are setting up really well and as soon as they get it they just go and they get the ball in quicker they've got even numbers in the forward line and one-on-ones ev everywhere I thought Larky was actually going to grab that one he had him beaten for position early so still just deliberating over this the the review system is just tossing up whether or not Charlie Ballard touched this ball on the way through is it we don't know what the soft call is either, so... It's a scramble at the goal mouth, and it sort of went between the knee and forearm of Ballard. Goal, I think. It sounds like a goal to me. <coughs> and Greenwood gets on the board. The Hobart local and North Melbourne get the reply. 14-9. 15-9-99. The Kangaroos, the Gold Coast, 11-9-75. 11 minutes gone, fourth and final term. Back out to 24 points. Had a good Greenwood. influence on the game, hasn't he, Greenwood? He's been able to take uh, Ballard out of his comfort zone, not allow him just to cruise around the back half and uh, take uh, intercept marks and uh, got himself on the scoreboard as well. Well, the Kangaroos, true to Alastair Clarkson's word that we're going to <laughs> We're going to try and win. That's interesting having a flick through Twitter and just seeing all the comments of people going, what are North Melbourne doing? Just put the queue on the rack. <laughs> yes, it's uh, that time of year, isn't it? It's been uh, been a bit of a conversation for a while. Back in the centre, Wits knocks it down. Punch forward by Simkin of North Melbourne, taken by Flanders, who's having a bit of a regeneration, but he's kicked... He's off the side of the boot and marked by Goda. Goda's been pretty good for them too. His little kick finds Lazaro. Lazaro's done some good things. Kicks it inside 50. Ballard just totally misjudged the fly. Taken by Greenwood. Hooks it around the body. The target is uh, Tucker. He can't take the mark. Oh, he grabs it now. Can he elude a couple? He might just get on the left boot. Gets it away to Howe. Howe's shot for oh, goal. Wow. There's a wonderful snap. Gold Coast have just stopped. Absolutely stopped. They stopped their contested ball around the stoppages, getting it out. And the Kangas, they're just up and about on their toes. Daniel Howe kicks his first goal. And the Kangaroos skip away by five goals. 16-9, 105. Twitter's gone off its face. 11-9, <laughs> And this has been something from the North Melbourne Footy Club. Gold Coast, as you said, uh, Jay, have just hit a brick wall. Yeah, they have. They, they just completely have stopped. They've stopped running. They've stopped trying to provide that short option so they can take control out of the game. They just can't get the ball and get it on their terms at all at the moment. And, you know, credit to the Kangaroos. Their pressure has been outstanding since after half time. They've kicked 15 of the last 19 goals here in North Melbourne to take a 30-point lead 13 minutes into this fourth and final term and they're going to go again here as Simpkin links up with Phillips inside 50 go North Melbourne Larky at the front was there a free kick oh. there was he was infringed by Mac Andrew and Nick Larky's going to kick for number eight wasn't much in that one oh, he's going for a career high here drinks are on Nick tonight <laughs> you know what I reckon West Coast had a conversation with the Kangas during the week and said look we got up the other week did you a favour how about your turn a favour <laughs> I suppose it takes the pressure off if you're not number one, doesn't it? Yeah. With your pick. You guys have been saying that uh, the Tasmanian boy is pretty good as well, so... Yeah, yeah, true. Yep. Well, Nick Larky, he's never kicked more than seven in a game. Let's see if he can make it number eight here at Bell Reeve in Hobart. The double Cobra fist pump oh. suggests that he has, but we're going to go upstairs. Is the post? No sense of theatre whatsoever, these umpires. <laughs> Third go review. Surely they can make for that. For this afternoon, we think decision. it might have hit the post. Nick Larky liked it off the boot. If ever you've seen a fraternity officially <laughs> spooked, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the umpire, goal umpire's fraternity. Mind you, it was very, very close, and I think the umpire might have been right on this occasion. It looks like the Snicko is... Maybe recording a little noise on the way past. So, good call. 
Hughes, it was good celebration too. From That's the flattening. Will he's he have me full? <laughs> he's going to have to do it again. So Nick Larkey remains stranded on seven goals. He's equal high career best as he's denied an eight to just clip the post on the way through. And it's a Gold Coast ball out of full back. So long kick out from uh, Butterick. And it'll be marked by Greenwood. So it'll come straight back in. So oh, look for him now, won't they? Yeah, give it back to him. Yep. Greenwood, the handball back to Core. He's not going to kick a goal from there. Lost it high. Larky got caught behind it to knock it away. Johnston, now to Miller. Miller, a little kick looking for Rose. It's got a good bounce. Delayed the handball and then got it to Fiorini, whose handball was overcooked it to uh, Johnston. Running onto it is Larky. Got a handball to Greenwood, who's caught by Mac Andrew. Hits the deck. Ball up 35 metres out in front of North Melbourne's goal. Gold Coast just got nothing to go to down the line. Like, they're just not moving, creating space or offering up leads or anything. It's uh, just not working for them. Burgess and Greenwood, and the umpire officiating off the play is giving a free kick to uh, Butterick, who might have been held from uh, from that ball up. So Butterick has the free and spreads it to Collins. Lateral ball now outside defensive 50. Took Miller was the target, but he had two kangaroos to contend with, one of which was Simpkin, who came up with the footy inside 50. He goes and he spots up Curtis. Tight on the boundary line, 30 metres out from goal. It'll take something... Pretty nice from there for Paul Curtis, but as a player brimming with talent, there's no doubt about it. Like backing. Paul, the dare's gone out of the Gold Coast game, hasn't it? They, they don't look not looking for that corridor kick now. It's just a wide, safe kick on their way out of their defensive 50. So Curtis, he's going to kick around the corner here from about 35 metres out. He got okay sort of connection. It went all the way to the line as players cannon into the goal post. It'll be over for a minus score. 16-11, 107 North Melbourne. The Suns, 11-9, 75. 16 and a half gone. Fourth and final term for Grandstand AFL. Got the belly of the ball, but it still went goalward. That was uh, bizarre. Here's Atkins for Gold Coast. Kicks right to the centre of Bell Reef. Goldstein came with a knock away. Lazaro's been terrific. Back to the big goalie. Fella. He shot for goal. Luck. Looks for Lee. Oh, you'll get number eight now. <laughs> He's moving as well as ever, Tom Goldstein. <laughs> oh, that was Don't retire yet, son. <laughs> that was brilliant. I was torn. I didn't know if I wanted him to keep the goal or if him to keep it lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the 21st mark inside their forward 50 compared to seven up the other end. So that's domination. This for a six-goal lead and an eight-goal haul to Nick Larkey. You have to fall over to miss it. Away yeah, he goes. Been... <laughs> no goal posts involved this time. And Larky gets the goal. And the Kangaroos are on the march. They're on the way to their third victory of the season. 17-11, 113. The Suns, 11-9, 75, who have stopped to a complete walk. Yeah, they have, haven't they? After going 28 points up, as we talked about a number of times, to to now be absolutely overrun. Um, they can't wait for the end of season to get here and uh, North are finally finding a little bit of form. They would like the season to continue. They are uh, starting to play some really attractive, high-scoring footy. A career-high eight-goal haul for Nick Larkey as he puts North Melbourne into a dominant position here in Hobart. 38 points to the good, the Roos. They're aiming to end their season on a high. Out of the middle now, the Gold Coast through Took Miller. Kick to right half forward. Davies gives chase for the Suns. He's hassled out of it. Got it off to Flanders somehow. Right foot snap inside 50. It eluded Casbolt off the deck. Rose's chance to kick a third, and he does. Left foot snap is good, and the Suns get one back. 32 points the margin here in Hobart. 17-11, 113 North Melbourne. Gold Coast 12 9 81, 19 minutes gone. Fourth and final term, Grandstand AFL, Jay Schultz. Yeah, look, uh, that's probably one against the flow, I guess. And, you know, he's, he's kicked three today and he's played his part in, in what is going on. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if if they can finish out the game or if, if that's just a one off. But um, I, I would still think the Kangas are going to get it done from here. 17 11, 113 to 12 9 81. How many. It looked like they've got many premiership players running around out there at the moment, uh, Jason. 80%. 80% from Damien Harden. That's a bit of a sheep shot. <laughs> but probably fair too. 
Back in the centre. Here goes Rao. I don't think Damien would be too worried about what I've got to say. Here's uh, Matty Rao now. Kicks a real wobbling left footer inside 50. No one can take the mark. In they go. Well done by Davies. Got it out to Miller. Miller. What about his left foot? Now to Ellis. Ellis sits it up. Curling back, but not enough. It's a behind. So the Suns 12 10 82. North Melbourne 17 11 113. 20 minutes gone in the final term at Bell Reef. And Bailey Scott with a paddock out of full back. He took two bounces and kicked it to centre wing. He couldn't quite hit the target in Larky. It's knocked out of bounds for a ball in. You know, he's kicked the eight goals today, but geez, he's worked hard up and back down the ground as well. I could just say that, Jay. He's got up and down the ground oh. a lot, hasn't he? And when we consider he's kicked eight, he hit the post twice as well. Yeah. So, not far from ten. He could easily have had that ten pack. It's Rao. It's wrapped up in a strong tackle by Powell. And then Lazaro's in there as well. And it's all wrapped up. Eight goals, three by my reckoning. So, yeah. yes. He's, uh, oh, he's had a day out, hasn't he? Up it goes. Sherry and Wits and Thomas, who's immediately tackled by Ainsworth. It's going nowhere. Another stoppage. Who's by 31 points here in Bell Reeve. As Wits lays the tackle on this occasion. And we'll go again. So a lull over Bell Reeve as Rao wins it out of the congestion. Handball to Ainsworth. Showed some candy. He was dragged down by Thomas but got a handball out to Took Miller. He got it to Davies. Fired on goal. It's across the face. A minor score to the Suns. 12-11-83. They trail North Melbourne 17-11. 113. An even five goal margin. 21 and a half gone. Fourth and final term. So the Kangas move the ball to half back through Scott and then Perez takes the mark. Had Lazaro in short, decided against it right in front of the big scoreboard here. A wobbly pass to find Scott again. So he just continues to rack them up. Gota. Little handball back to Scott is about to get shut down and that forced the handball over the top. Ellis rode a high one and then chipped to Flanders. And Flanders still on the wing or just forward of it. Gold Coast try to go forward. Ellis. Then away to Atkins. Atkins loads up a long bomb, and I think he might have got there. That's well, we're going upstairs again <laughs> because that's what we do. Golan Pies are just going to put themselves out of a job if they just keep getting the uh, artificial intelligence to judge every goal now. We don't want a witch's hat with a camera on it. No, <laughs> and there's probably just as much riding on this game as there was the other one. It was a mistake was made in. <laughs> Try and tell that to your average um, <laughs> a goal. Adelaide Crow. It's a goal. They're having a little bit of a burst here at the moment, Kangaroos, and I wonder if that's just the Kangas putting the cue in the rack a bit. So what would you say if the Suns got up on one from here? <laughs> <laughs> so Harley Reid is definitely be in a total tailspin or a spin. <clears throat> It'd be well and truly referred to the integrity <laughs> body of the <laughs> AFL. It's a goal and in the meantime, so Rory Atkins gets his first of the afternoon, started as a sub, and uh, the Suns have now got 13. 13, 11, 89. The Kangas, 17, 11, 113. We did talk about it at the start of the game. We wanted to see some goals scored, so um, yep. we've got to wish it's been a really uh, high octane, entertaining game. Blood rule. Well, the Louvre Andrew Cooling's down there keeping an eye on that. He's no, he's going Burgess. to sleep. Burgess is off. I think. He's frozen. No, he's going to sleep. I reckon he'd be cold down there. <laughs> sure. It's back to four goals. 24 points the margin. We've got an update from Andrew Cooling shortly. Back in the middle we go. Anderson wrapped up by Taran Thomas. Ball spills free. Lazaro's got a little centre bounce hit. He scrambles it out to Simpkin who's been really good all day but that's a wonderful mark going back by Johnston who just reeled it in with the one paw at half back. Short ball is pretty good inside as well. Fla Flanders back of the square, flares it out wide to Atkins, the goal kicker who takes a bounce beyond a wing mm. and now kicks inside 50, spotted up a target here and Davies takes the mark 40 metres out from goal, slight angle, Andrew cooling on the boundary. Yeah, haven't quite frozen down here there was a reason Gold <laughs> was wearing the jacket though uh, Burgess is getting a knee checked out just a little bit of claret, nothing too serious So 
Alex Davies here, just quietly, can cut the margin back to three goals if he kicks truly. It'll take a pretty good kick from just inside the paint of 50. It looks okay off the boot. He Got lets it. fly. Yeah. This one isn't going upstairs. He's put it straight through the middle. Mm. And the Gold Coast Suns are coming late. 14-11-95 go the Suns. They trail by three goals. 17-11-1, 13 North Melbourne. 25 minutes gone. Fourth and final term. There can't be long left. There's just three goals in it here in Hobart. Six minutes and 26 seconds left, so there's plenty of time oh, to kick wow. three goals. So, um, yeah, the, the Harley Reid Cup is still on. <laughs> Somebody at uh, AFL head office integrity will be uh, <laughs> dusting off their notebooks <laughs> as we speak. The phone will be ringing. Uh, just, they'll be counting the kangaroos players. We've got 18 out there, <laughs> 16 or... Yes, it's just a terrible time. <laughs> so back in the centre, 17-11 plays 14-11. So from the centre, Lazaro, in comes Raul. Dives on the footy, little kick off the ground. No one can take the mark. Well done by Ooh. Thomas. Just breaks the line. Kicks long. His target's lucky. Oh. He can't take the mark. Got crunched. Here's Curtis. He can put it away. And he Ooh. does. There'll be no mistake about this result. As Paul Curtis swooped on it and snapped with a searing left footer. How good was Tarrant Thomas there through the middle? His second. He's looked dangerous all day, Paul Curtis. A tough gig playing that crumbing forward. That tackling forward, he's got to do so much work, but uh, he gets his second. 18-11, 119, the Kangaroos. The Suns, 14-11, 95, and Taron Thomas with a burst of speed that's just elite. It is, isn't it? And when you throw Luke Davis Uniac in that mix as well, you know, he's as big as probably Taron Thomas is. Yeah. So um, you've got some class through the midfield, and then you've got Tom Powell, Phillips, Simpkin. So North can really say that uh, their future looks bright whether they've gotten the number one pick or not so ruse with the instant response and any sort of doubts on the result here have probably been put to bed although still a little bit of time remaining so don't quite rule it out you just stay in that for kangaroos fans steve <laughs> <laughs> sort of watching <laughs> up it goes miller out of the ruck contest puts it out in front of uh, Noah Anderson, it kicks to the top of the square. Chole out the back, couldn't quite take the mark or bring it under his spell. Scott arrives and just fumbles it somewhat professionally over the line for a minor score. 18 12, 120 North Melbourne, 14 12, 96 the Suns. And Scott will do the kick in duties himself, kicks beyond a wing towards. The outer side, Curtis on hands and knees, fed it up to Dawson, sweeping handball now, wanted Howe, he didn't get him, Ellis took the loose footy and was tackled by Howe, somehow one out of handball to McPherson, he's mobbed by two ruse, Lazaro's one of them, he'll win a free kick, ball right in front of the hill on the outer side, kicks defensively back to Bailey Scott, who's had a stack of it, I wouldn't mind a stats check on him, kick is no good to right half forward, over the head of Simkin, lurking was Curtis, it Trip was over the boundary line. 18 11, 119. He's leading the position better on the ground, mate. He's at 30. Him and Matty Rao both had 30. Yeah, he's been prominent, hasn't he? Scott, he's been quality too. 14 12, 96, the Suns, deep into this fourth and final term. Boundary throw in. Wits and Sherry. Sherry knocked it down, but Wits grabbed it again and then got it to his boot. McPherson somehow got it to. Ellis, who kicked it to the lady over there wearing a very smart outfit <laughs> with uh, sunglasses and absolute four coat coats on on the hill, and you'll need it today because it's freezing in Hobart. Sunny, but freezing. Scott kicks to a pack. Ballard can't take the mark. Thomas, now to Curtis. This way, that way. Can he get around? Laid it off to Lazaro. Back to Simpkin. Simpkin's tucked in on the boundary line. He's mm -hmm. going to kick long. Up goes uh, Larky. And at the back, Ainsworth just escorts it through for a behind. So 18-12-120 plays 14-12-96. The Kangaroos are going to win their third game. Miller received from the kick in. Release Raul off half back. He gets... The Suns moving to half forward. Roses onto a loose footy. Left football inside 50. Out in front of Swallow. This will be coast to coast from the Suns. He's cannoned it into the goalpost. 
He missed the easiest of goals, did David Swallow. A minor score for the Roos. Probably just run straight at the goals, I would have thought. For the Suns, <laughs> I should say. He tried to just kick it around the corner. 15 metres out for no real reason, did David Swallow. And a chance goes begging. Goldstein flies high on the outer side. Can't take the mark. Scrapped out of the congestion. Ballard takes it on the bounce with the Suns. Shares it with Anderson. Miller back to Anderson. Dragged down in a tackle. Suns retain possession. McPherson inside. 50 now go the Suns. Mackay gets back and takes the saving mark for North Melbourne. I wonder if it's his final few minutes in a North Melbourne jumper, Ben Mackay. I wonder if he wants to be part of the resurgence or not. Long kick. Ford takes the mark. On today's form, they've got... A little bit to work with, Steve well, Williams. Have, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of optimism, isn't there, when you look at the the talent in the side? Maybe they got the 80%. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Alistair Clark <laughs> probably hope so. Here's Powell, who I've been impressed with today. He's Goes, been good, hasn't he? Yeah. He was there when they were down, and he was yep. probably the, the catalyst to, to turn things around. Yes, he's uh, hard at it and uses it well by hand and foot. Sheasel, who's... An amazing run this year. Kick carries the pack. Collins, spear handball to Andrew, whose little half-distance kick was uh, looking for a teammate in Butterick, but he couldn't get it. Inside 50 goes Lazaro again, and Ballard's got some work to do. Thought about going across the face, then got his uh, boot to ball. That was dangerous stuff. Anderson uh, mops it up and gets a handball away to Atkins, who got it to Raul, and now to Miller. And Miller goes out wide. It's a high ball. Ellis has got to really fly. Howe just uh, overran the football. In goes Ellis again. He's tackled by Howe, who never gives up. And I've seen him play a lot of games, Daniel Howe. He is a 100 percenter, and it will be a ball up. 31 and a half, nearly 32 minutes gone from the ball up. Knocked out, looking for Thomas. Thomas now. He'll feed it inside 50, looking for Larky, but Andrew comes over the back and kills the ball. It'll be a boundary throw in, right forward pocket with the Kangaroos in attack, and we've gone nearly 32. All over at the MCG, Fremantle record a 37 point win over Hawthorne to finish their season. On a, a high. A disappointing season, really, from where they uh, were last year. Yeah, in the overall scheme of things, yes, but they just seemed to regain some form, didn't they, in the last sort of month or so. So at least they'll take something into 2024. Stoppage now inside the Kangaroos' forward 50 as Thomas shrugs the route tackle. Got a handball out somehow. Not an easy thing to do when Matt Rowell has hold of you, but the boundary line beats all comers. 23 points the margin here. North Melbourne, well, this is a result that's going to send shockwaves through the AFL. A lot of people had the Gold Coast Suns marked down as the winners of this one this afternoon, given the stakes. Thomas takes a loose foot. He sells some candy to Rao and just sends oh. a really neat, classy ball inside to a sliding Eddie Ford who marks on his chest and can kick another for the Roos. I think the Kangaroos might celebrate a little bit tonight. The boys. Geez, they've played well in the second half. They've just been all over the Gold Coast. They've just taken away their game that they played in the first half. The amount of pressure they've put on them. Turned the ball over and then they've just gone quick. And they've looked really quick and clean in the second half. I mean, dominant in the second half. And Eddie Ford is one of their real up-and-comers. Leans back on the kick for goal number three. Played really well today. No questions whatsoever about that. And North Melbourne extend to 29 points. 19 12, 126 North Melbourne. The Gold Coast 14 13, 97. The Roos absolutely dominant after half time. 33 and a half gone. Fourth and final turn for Grandstand AFL. North Melbourne are going to snap a 20 game skid here in Hobart. Well, Darren Thomas, that little play there is just a little glimpse into the future of what uh, that guy can do moving forward for North Melbourne through the midfield. He is he can, midfield, forward, yeah. he, can, he can do it all. He just doesn't waste the footy. And he's so clean and he's smart and he thinks through each, each possession he has. 29 points the margin now in favour of North Melbourne. Thomas couldn't get it from the bounce. And it will be a ball up in the middle. Todd Goldstein 
Will he, this be one of his last exchanges as a North Melbourne player? Wits can't get it. Now way to Phillips. High kick. North going to attack. Curtis read it. Got to the drop of the ball. Beautiful. He is. Here he Got is. Him. Larky. Got him. Larky. Yeah. Oh. Larky. Free kick. Free. Holding uh, across the shoulder. Larky in front. And he's going for goal number nine. We've got time to get ten. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> It'll take you 30 seconds here. That's probably well, going to cost him 10. He could have had. He could have easily had <laughs> yes, 10, couldn't he? He could have. And, well, would still yeah. take 9-3, though. 33 seconds to go. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to kick from about 45 metres out on a 45-degree angle. He's suited as a right footer. He wants to milk a bit of time off the clock. He's on the runway as we speak. Here he is, Nick Larkey, for goal number nine. He kicks... Look at him. It comes hey. back. It's there. Nick Lucky celebrates. And so do just about all of his North Melbourne teammates. They come to him. Nine goals for Nick Larkey. North Melbourne, 2012, 132. Have a 35-point lead over the Gold Coast. 14, 13, 97. And who said they wouldn't try? Well, after... 20 in a row, was it? 20 losses in a row. It's uh, great to see them get around and uh, excited. They're a young team and uh, they hope that this can be the start of their build up the ladder. Well, well, judging by the second half, you wouldn't think this is a team that's lost 20 in a row. No. They're, they've been so clean and so quick and their pressure has been outstanding. So back in the middle we go for the final time for these two clubs in season 2023 and you can't put a price on winning draft picks and players will come and go but the fabric of football clubs is what matters most as North Melbourne record a 35 point win in Hobart they might forego the number one draft pick but try telling these players that winning doesn't matter North Melbourne 2012 132. The Suns 14 13 97. And it was all off the back of nine goals to their young superstar in Nick Larky. So join in the chorus and sing it one and all. Join in the chorus of Melbourne's on the wall. Good old North Melbourne, the champions you'll agree. North Melbourne is the team that plays for you and me. 2012-132 North Melbourne. The Gold Coast 14-13-97. They run out by 35 points. They may well have foregone the number one draft pick in season 2023. But this win will amount to a whole heap more than that for this North Melbourne football club. It was off the back of a stunning performance by Nick Larkey, their superstar young full forward who kicked nine goals three amongst 21 disposals. He took 11 marks. He was absolutely magnificent. The future is certainly bright if he's going to be involved and he certainly will be going forward. Eddie Ford kicked three goals. Paul Curtis kicked two. Greenwood, Simpkin, Taylor, Cor, Howe and Tucker all had singles. While for the Gold Coast, it was Roses with three. Chole had two, as did Casbolt Flanders. Singles to Swallow, Davies, Fiorini, Atkins and Miller. A really quick word from you, Steve Williams. And then, Jay Schultz, I'll get our ABC Footballer of the Year votes from you. Yeah, well, just congratulations to North Melbourne. Um, an entertaining game of footy. What have we had? 34 goals scored on a beautiful day in Tasmania. Gold Coast would be disappointed. They were expected to come down here and win the match, but... Um, after going 28 points up, it was on North Melbourne and they came back. Nick Larkey, I would imagine Jay will have best on ground with nine goals. But yeah, um, yeah fantastic <laughs> performance and uh, well done to the Roos and they'll be looking forward to 2024. Jay Schultz, your VC Footballer of the Year. Yeah, obviously, you kick a 9-3 in a game, you probably had a fair influence over the game. So Nick Larkey for one. Um, I gave two votes to Scott. I thought he was outstanding throughout the game. Um, he was good everywhere. Uh, you know, Ford was in there as well, but I gave one vote to uh, Matty Rowell. I thought he fought hard all day for, 
for the Gold Coast Suns and, and did his part in the in the game. So just to confirm, that was L Larky for the three. Yep. Because <laughs> you said one. Oh, I was, did I? No, no, I, I, meant, about I, meant, to, I was about first, to seriously no, no. question your vote He's giving a abilities. He's a forward. Jay like, Schultz is a forward. Yeah, mate, if, he, if he'd kicked three, I would have given him three votes still. <laughs> well, that's going to be all from us uh, from here at Bell Reeve. It's a, a result that is set to send shockwaves throughout the AFL world. It'll be spoken about at length over the next two days. You can guarantee that. North Melbourne, 35-point winners over the Gold Coast Suns, 2012, 132 to the Suns, 14, 13, 97. It was Nick Larky with a nine-pack of goals, the young superstar forward propelling his team to their third win of the season. They snap a 20-game losing skid, and they exit season 2023 with just a little glimmer of hope to go into the off-season. That's all from us from here at Bell Reeve. We're going to send you to the Gabba for the Brisbane Lions and St Kilda. You'll be with Quinton Hole, Michael Price, Matthew Primus, and Jason Ackermanis. Thanks for listening. That's all from Hobart. The Lions fans in for all.